Hey, what's up, everybody? This is uh, Gary with the Get Some Podcast. My guest this week, most people know him as Jordan Rock's brother. <laughs> 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 I didn't realize till you came in this morning. I said, "How?" Because I'll be in cities randomly, and another Rock yeah. brother will come up and be like, "Yeah, I'm Jordan. I'm so and so." I'm like, "This? How many of them are you?" What I mean, you obviously, we know Chris and you, right? How many? You said there's eight? Eight boys, two girls. But you know what the crazy thing Ten is? Ten kids? By virtue of us, me, me, Chris, and Jordan being comics, all the other brothers think they they get to com- go to comedy shows for free. Oh, as they should. They just walk in any, but any venue, any comic, they just walk, yeah. like you play in <laughs> Demopolis, Alabama, they just yeah. walk in like, yo, I'm... I'm Chris's brother. I'm, what's the, I need two. What's, what's does, I mean, it does hold some weight. Like, I mean, it holds some weight. It holds weight when it's our show. So let me, yeah, let me ask you, what is... Uh, What's everybody? What what is everybody doing? What's their professions? Uh, Not everybody's clearly a comedian or in their. Every, every, everybody could be a comedian. Everybody's super funny. My sisters are super funny. Well, DNA ain't nothing to mess with. Yeah, man. my brother Shabazz. His name is Charles. He changed his name to Shabazz. Uh, he's a Muslim. He passed away uh, a few years back. Okay. Uh, Chris, you know what Chris does? Andre owns his own trucking company in uh, Pennsylvania. Then there's myself. My brother Brian. Brian is a, a preacher. Then there is uh, Derek. Derek is in Bahrain. Working on a military base. Jesus. Then there is uh, Kenny. Kenny is a Kenny's the one that just floats around. I don't know what Ke- Kenny. Yeah, I'm sure I've met Kenny. Kenny like- does whatever he's doing that week. <laughs> 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 then there's Jordan. Who who did I miss? I think that's everybody. Your sisters. What are your sisters? My sister. Do? One of my sisters is an accountant. She lives here. She's an accountant on the Fox lot. And my uh, younger sister, she works with uh, mentally disabled children. Jeez. You guys are all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it amazing how you can come out of, like, kids can come out of the same mom and dad, completely different. Like, you have a fry cook or an astronaut. You know, <laughs> I, say that, I say that all the time, that sometimes all you have in common with a person is that you have the same mother and father. Facts. In fact, there's a bolo out on my brother right now. Be on the lookout for Really? <laughs> He's on the run. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So you it's got like a, this. You got a criminal in the family? Yeah. Too? Oh, we got a bunch. Okay, we had one. We had one. <laughs> and, I, and it's funny because when you're when you're somewhat of a you know when you got some status celebrity, so my 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 brother is is the lowest level of thievery on the planet. <laughs> Him and another guy are going around Cincinnati stealing catalytic converters off cars because you can get seventy five dollars at the at the uh, junkyard. What for is them. a catalytic converter? It's something on a car, I guess. And you can you can what easily, you can do easily accessible. Like, yeah, so you much. can get it, and then you don't have to like you can do you can go to a parking lot, and if you're if you're good, right. you can be out of there in five minutes. You can get oh, like, so you go to a parking lot and get a hundred of them. It, so I'm saying if nobody's paying attention, but they got him on the ring cam. He broke into this girl's house and they got him on ring cam and it was on the local news. Anybody seen this guy? <laughs> so then people were hitting me up like, isn't this your brother? And I go, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you guys look alike like, like rock Not brothers? Not really. Because all rock brothers look alike. So if my brother commits no, a crime, it's, I'm, it's, go, I'm get, bringing... Yeah, but you're full. I'm going in for questioning. Yeah, all mine are half. Okay, okay, okay. You know, my dad, on my dad's side, are, we're all tall. He's not tall like me. Right. So and he kind of looks like me a little bit, but not, not that much. But everybody knows in my small town where I grew up, they know who, we don't have the same last name, but the they know who The catalytic culprit. Oh, my God. And they got him on the ring cam, and it's funny. It's like 3.45 in the morning. And I will say he was wearing a mask. So, <laughs> <laughs> And they, got, they go into these garages, and then, you know, the car's parked on the streets and just getting underneath there, getting it, and wow. rolling. I'm like this. It's the lowest level. $75. 75 at the junkyard, and he's doing it with another guy. So you're looking Damn. at thirty seven fifty. Thirty seven fifty a pop. He's killing it right now. <laughs> and my mom's like clearly covering. Good, yeah. I, I know As a mom does, moms don't want to give their kids up. Yeah. I'm like this. All right, mom. Okay. You know where yeah, this is going. Mom's always moms ride out. He just got out. He moms just got ride out. out. Dad's like, hey, I'm bringing you in. I think dad's like, yeah, dad might be giving him the jack. Because <laughs> we got different dads. Before we even came on the air, I told you yeah, I wanted to yeah. confront you about something. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't want to blindside you with it. But you're okay. You're back on the road this week, right? Yeah, I'm in uh, Indianapolis at Helium Comedy Club Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I've never done that club. Have you? Yeah, I've done it several times. The Helium in Indy? Yeah. Is it nice? I've never. It's very nice. It's, it's one of the nice. few I haven't done. And it's right downtown, like literally heart of downtown. So oh. everything you need is right there. If you like, back when you could party, club right there, restaurants right here, the hotels right here. So it's quick. Dope about Indy is they got those indoor walkways. 
So right. even when it's cold, right. you can like go anywhere downtown and yeah. not have to go outside. That's why yeah. the Super Bowl, they killed it. Did you ever, did you go to the Super Bowl that year? I haven't gone to the Super Bowl in very, very many years. Well, it's crazy. You're a Steelers fan. You don't go. <laughs> I, I don't might go. go this year. I don't go because I, I have a reason. I might go this year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get into Steel Talk in a minute. <laughs> so the last time I saw you was January. Right. Well, I saw you in February, but we was on that tour, the, the, the Mike Epps right. run we was doing. Right. And January, we're at the James L. Knight Center, and I freaking walk in to my dressing room, and somebody just start. Somebody opened all the liquor, all the mixes, and hold on, I don't have Oreo cookies in my writer, right. but for some reason there's Oreo cookies in my dressing room, and that shit was open. I go, and I'm looking around like, what the fuck? So you know, I'm just with Brad normally, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brad's with me. I go, did you come over here earlier, Brad? He goes, nah, I came over to make sure your green was straight. And I was like, well, what the fuck is this? So the only people there when I got there was you and Michael Blackson. Right. So Blackson's across the hall. I go to Blackson. It's just normal two dudes. I'm like, all right. I look in your dress room. You're having a fucking rap concert. You guys are freestyling or something. <laughs> I poked my head in, and it's fucking 3 a.m. at Live in Tony's dress room. <laughs> It's like, where are all these dudes coming? And there's like music on you. guys. Like, are you up? You like go, all right, I go, I'm just doing the math. I got a feeling it's somebody in this room right now. Because you didn't have your normal, usually you right, had your right, guys right. you roll with. Right. You had a lot of extra guys that yes. night. So I told Brad, I go, Brad, uh, I don't really care who did it. I go, but I need everything replaced. Because I don't right. know if somebody put something in my shit. Right, right. Brad disappears for 15 minutes and come back going, I don't think it's happening, man. I go, what? <laughs> so I, I go left quick. I go, uh. So I go find the promoter. I said, I need all my shit replaced. I go, what, what the fuck? Somebody went in my shit. Right. So now I'm going, Brad, go find out who went in my shit, Brad. And then I, I go, I got a feeling somebody in Tony's dressing room. I go, because there's only so many people here. And they had a security guard in our dressing room. And Epps people weren't there yet. Right. So I'm doing the process of elimination. And Samora only travels with her husband. Wayne, right, right. So I'm like this. The one Samora, she's on another wing. So I'm literally. And why her is a restaurant. So huh? she wouldn't, her, her, her uh, rider is like a restaurant. Oh, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. Meet, you're she good. Going, yeah. So when you went on stage, your whole freestyle Boogie Down Bronx crew, <laughs> now they're on the side of the stage watching you go up. And I'm going, everybody going, what's in your cup? What's in your cup? Because I, I got Belvedere. Club soda, Red Bull, and like cranberry juice. I that's the only mixes I got. Right. So I'm going, what's in your cup? What's in your cup? I'm looking, right? One dude, he he should never commit a crime or be on the first 48. He wasn't your normal crew. He's like, huh? I go, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that drink? Because now I'd already looked at your dressing room. Right. I go, you ain't got that. Right, 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 right. So, right, so right. I'm like, Tony ain't got Belvedere and shit. So I'm looking, I'm like, okay, who's got vodka? So this guy, <laughs> full glass, right? And I go, I go, where'd you get that? What? I go, where'd you get that, man? He was sorry. He came up with some excuse. It was like this. Okay. I walked away. I go, I know who did it. And then I'm telling Brad. And then Brad's like, and then I told the promoter, you want me to kick him out? I go, no, 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 no. I just don't think he knows any better. It's fine. I go, but I know who did it. Right. And then I get off stage. I go up. I get off stage. The dude that I confronted comes up with his phone. He goes, hey, man. I appreciate the way you came at me. He goes, but I ain't on that sucker shit. And he showed me a phone of some video of him when he got here and shit. I go, what does that have to do with anything? But here's the thing. Security, why would they see it? Because the hallway's this way, but all three of our dressing rooms was down that little side right, hallway. Right. It was Blackson, me, and mm -hmm. you. So they could have easily went in and security didn't see it. So I was like this. So I'm just letting you know, you got a rude motherfucker in but your you crew. But you know what? Now, <laughs> <laughs> my rebuttal, that weekend... Was what MLK weekend in in Miami, yep. right? That was yep. a holiday weekend, so what, right? Like I do no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. So that's why the Black entourage got take. <laughs> exponentially bigger that weekend because it was like, okay, I land and I put a video like, yo, I'm in Miami for the weekend. We had James all night. Somebody might hit me like, yo, son, I'm in town. All right, yeah. pull up. Yo, where you at? I'm at the hotel. Come through. So it gets bigger and bigger. That's when the stragglers start coming. The guys I don't really know. Yeah. And they start coming around and start. You know, taking liberties. So I don't even know which dude you're talking about, but it wasn't my regular guys. I know, know, I know what your regular they guys. They know, they know the rules. Yeah. And second part of this, you know, I used to not even have a writer until one city, I forgot what city it was. I went in your dressing room by mistake when I first got on the tour with Mike, mm -hmm. and it was it's you, it's Mike, it's uh, Quake. I'm like, shit, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That they even offered me some dates. 
So they were sending, you know, what do you want for your rider? I'm like, I'm, I'm not tripping. I just, I'm just, I'm good. I'm just happy to be on the show. Mm-hmm. And then I would get like a bag of potato chips, like a literal <laughs> bag that you buy in a <laughs> bodega and a bottle of water. I'm like, damn, that's. And then one time I got to the city. This wasn't that particular time, but one time I got to the city, and before they put the names on the door, I got there that early. It was, it was usually when we do like a, a college. Like mm-hmm. auditorium, yeah. I know that there's a basketball court there somewhere, so yeah. I go early, shoot around for a little bit before the show starts. So I, I think it was like Louisville. Yeah, I remember. I was gonna say I remember you showing a video of Louisville. Like you yeah. were so geeked to be on the practice be on the court. court. Yeah, yeah. So I go early just to shoot around. I go in the room before they put the signs on the door, and I see bottles of liquor and soda and water and chips, and I'm like, Yo, who? The, damn, whose room is this? And they're like, Oh, you? That's Gary's. Yours is over here. So I walk over to the other room, and it's nothing. It's like a <laughs> bottle of water, maybe a Mountain Dew, some Skittles. I'm like, okay, next city, I want a rider. And yeah. that's when I started getting a rider, because I saw what the fuck you were getting. Yeah. I was like, okay, I got to start living like I'm on this show for real. But you know what's funny? Like, I'm not a huge drinker like that, especially before I go up. I can't drink right, before I go on stage. Right. Can you, do you drink no, before you go on no, stage? No, no. I can't either. Some people get like, nah. they're fucking liquored up when they hit the other. How do you do that? Because then it's a crutch. I, I've always, when I started doing stand up, I would see comics who that like shots before they go on, have a bad set, more shots. Yeah. Have a bad set, more shots. And now you're just on stage fucked up. You're not even a comic now. You're just like a venting alcoholic. Yeah. I always want to be on top of my shit though, in right. case you get a heckler right. or something. Right, right, right. right. I want to be on top right. of my shit. I want shit. all my synapses to be yeah. firing, you know? Brad, uh, my role manager, I went, to, <laughs> I went to his house in Atlanta. He had. I think he'd taken every bottle we've ever had on the road <laughs> that we didn't open. I was like, dude, your liquor cabinet is fucking amazing. <laughs> I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> he, I forgot, like, at some some days, I had these exclusive Belvedere bottles. Like, I hadn't seen right. them before. I go, what? I, said, I looked at Brad, what? and then it hit me. I go, oh, you're taking the bottles. Hey, man. Hey. Unless you're in Miami and one of Tony's travelers <laughs> drinks half of it. <laughs> I can't remember when we met, dude. I can't even remember. I'm sure it was like at a, at a, one of the black nights in L.A. It was was it L.A.? The, was, it, was it New York? I can't even remember, Because, you know, I, I, I only asked that because before I started doing stand-up, like before I was professionally a comic, I would go to comedy shows. So I remember I met some more at the Beacon Theater years before I even started doing stand-up. How many years have you been doing stand-up now? I started in 98. Professionally. Oh, so, we, so we started around the same time. But I had, I had gone on stage before that. Every, I think every comic has the same similar story. You go on stage maybe a year or two before that, bomb horribly, yeah. and then you're kind of scared to get back up there. Yeah. So I went on stage maybe 95 that summer. Oh, wow. Bombed. Because I thought I'm funny with my friends. I can be funny on stage. Mm-hmm. Then you start learning how to do it. Like you, you got to get on stage to learn how to. I think you got to be on stage to learn how to do stand up. You got to learn stand up from here looking this way. You can't I, learn it from in the room looking at the stage. I agree. That's why I always said uh, I don't. I never understood stand-up classes. That's just a guy trying to get some money. That's all it is. Yeah, that's I'm a guy like, that's like I found a niche that I could, people think I can teach them to do this. So nah. The only way you can do stand-up is to do it. Yeah, it's that's like it's it. like learning how to box. You have to get punched in the face. Exactly. There's no. You can learn all the techniques sitting there, but until you in the ring getting blows thrown uh-huh. at you, that's when you're learning. Yeah. So stand up is the same way. Yeah. So to so answer your question, I don't know when we met, but I know I might have seen you before I was doing stand up. I'm usually pretty good at this too, and I'm I can't believe I can't remember I think I, just, I think we just saw each other so much. Then probably then we started. But that's the a good road. thing. You know why? Because all of the guys that, that were dicks to me when I was coming up, I remember vividly when I met them. Oh wow. So guys that I'm cool with, I'm like, I just I just feel like I always knew him, you know? Yeah. Guy, yeah, yeah. guy Tory, I just feel like I always knew guy. I don't remember meeting him. He's so cool. Did you do Fat Tuesdays when it was jumping? No, jumping? I wasn't in LA then. I, oh, I, you weren't in LA then. When I came to LA, it was already done. Oh, that was the night. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. You had your Wednesday night at the movie theater. Yeah. Right? And I and I did Chocolate Sunday for a few years. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was cool, but when I say there was nothing like Fat Tuesday, I had gone yeah. here about a month ago and we was like, you know, they that they did that show on Showtime dying up here. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know how they don't try to, you know, get guys from the mid mid nineties to about two thousand three, especially the mid nineties to like two thousand. Man, I, I I told guy I go, dude, I remember the Lakers are playing the Pacers in the NBA Finals, and the Pacers. What's that? Kobe, that, Kobe, Shaq years? Yeah, that was okay. two thousand. <clears throat> and the Pacers was that Fat Tuesday night for Game One. I go, they're done. <laughs> <laughs> They weren't drinking or wilding, <laughs> but 
I guess it's something to do that you're done by 10 or 11 right, at night. Right. But I remember thinking like this. I remember, I, I vividly remember Mark Jackson waiting on a car in front of a uh, of comedy store. And I just remember he had a look in his face and I go, they're not, they're not going to win. Like, <laughs> it almost is like, ah, oh, fuck. What, were it, people giving him shit outside while he was Not waiting? really, but his face is like reality about to kick in, like, oh, shit's about to get real tomorrow. Yo, Shaq's here. I was, in, uh, <laughs> I was in New York one time at the auto show at Jacob Javits. They have the auto show at Jacob Javits every year, right? And this was when Knicks were playing Pacers. One of those oh. fight years, you know what I'm saying? You're a Knicks the, guy? I, I, I want to I see the Knicks do well. I'm mm-hmm. not a Knicks fan, but I, I want to see the Knicks do well. Mm-hmm. But, uh... The Pacers were there, and they walking through the auto show, and everybody's just like, "Yo, fuck out of here, yo, <laughs> fuck yo, suck a dick, mother." Haywood Workman, they was just giving him the Haywood. business. Yo, you fucking dick, get the fuck. Yo, this New York City motherfucker. I was like, dude, he's just trying to enjoy the new cars, right? Like, and he's just walking like, uh, "Come on, bro, I'm just, I, I just play ball, man." I just, uh, Fuck, shut the fuck up, baby. Man. <laughs> this real Brooklyn dude's just like, yo, get the fuck. We should rob you, motherfucker. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> dude, they, they, no way they win in tomorrow. No way. He's just, yeah. he's stressed out. Haywood's such a good dude. You know Haywood? Now he's, now he's, uh, ref. he's a ref, yeah. Yeah, that was what, that was, I met him like his last year in the league. And then Haywood's so random, like, he went to Israel and played. Uh-huh. He literally, I get a call at like 3 a.m. What's up, man? What are you doing? He goes, I'm out of this bar, man, in Israel by myself. I go, yeah, okay, it's 3 a.m. in L.A., dude. <laughs> but then you were the guy he thought to call. Right. <laughs> and, it was, and this was before FaceTime, so I'm like, if we had had FaceTime, he would have right. FaceTimed and shit, but he would take a picture of where he was at. And then it was, he actually, I was like, damn, Israel looks nice. He was, yeah, it's cool over here, man. You know uh, Dev Green? Uh-uh. He used to play for the Lakers. He played for the Lakers and Miami. He's Dev a, Green? Yeah, yeah. He's he played He played Kobe years. Uh-uh, I don't know. From Virginia. He played, uh, I think he played for ha- at Hampton. I got to look But uh, he'll hit me every once in a while. Yo, what's up, fam? Just checking on you. I'm like, yo, where you at, man? Where in the, where in the world you at? Oh, I'm in uh, Brazil, man. You know, <laughs> The game's just lit out here. I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> Hold it down. <laughs> you can tell me they lonely as I'm shit. I'm going to do another season in China before I, you know, try to make some moves back to the back home. All, yeah. all right. Okay. That's got to be a, a good, ex- that's got to be a cool experience though, like to experience an entire other culture. But I wonder if you still, <clears throat> as an NBA player, uh, if you win the title, like Marbury winning the title in China. Right. Does, is it the same feeling? Well, for not- Marbury, he's <clears throat> iconic there. So it's, right. it's a championship for him. <laughs> I guess it's like winning an Oscar or winning a BET award maybe. Like, <laughs> it's still cool as shit, and it's still awesome, but it's not, it's not the end people of it. Sh- people don't even show up to receive their BET awards. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's did I? Yeah, because I, I accepted Drake's one year. Yo, can I tell you a story? One time, this was years ago. Uh, what show was I on? I was on a show, and they were talking about the BET Awards, and I said, here's an idea. I want to pitch this to BET. I want to go to the BET Awards and I'll make a make a whole thing, uh, make a whole spectacle of it. Like, have interview me on the red carpet, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just here to celebrate and watch all the great names accept their awards. And I say all the people that are nominated that they know that we already know aren't there, that aren't going to yeah. show. Up. I'm here to see Beyonce, man, and it's going to be great <laughs> to see Jay Z. All the people that we know are not showing up to receive their awards. I say all their names, then I sit down, and when the award show starts, they say the winner is Jay Z for and. The announcer says, Jay-Z isn't here to... I just go, hey, whoa, whoa, from wherever in the room. Yo, yo, I got it, I got it. And I run up there, yeah. and I accept it on behalf of Jay-Z. And I do Dude, that... the whole show. I do Dude, that that's funny. I, I, nothing. Dude, that's funny as shit. And I'm like, yo, imagine I go up there as... I, who would Jay-Z want to thank? Uh, I want to thank B, of course. Uh, yeah. I want to thank uh, Marcy. Dude, that's funny as shit. I and then thank, you come back again, and somebody then, else But then it. I go sit somewhere else. Yeah. So it's like Kanye's not here. Yo, yo, yo. And I'm over here yeah. like, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. <laughs> uh, Kanye would like to thank Kanye, of course. And uh, I want to thank. And then five minutes later, somebody else not here. Yo, yo. Uh. You know what? I'll, I'll pitch it and see if I can do I it. I fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yo, this was years ago I pitched this. Everybody I told the idea was like, yo, that's fucking funny as shit. Told people to be but you know, that's, nothing. That's part of the business. Nothing. That's part of the business. Because I, I pitched the thing to BET and, uh, and I got nothing either. What I thought it was. Similar to yours? Yeah. It might have been the same year. I don't know. I might the same year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I said it'd be funny if I walk up as a presenter and I, I go like, 
you know, hey, it's, I'm so excited to be at the BET Awards. I go, everybody knows we set the trends. People follow what we do. You know, everything is we, we, we. And then who's ever with me, like if, if you're presenting yeah. with me, I'd be like, you're like, Gary, Gary, you're reading my lines. I go, oh, oh shoot. Oh, that's a, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, I forgot. And I was going to do the whole, you know, it's good to be black, man. That's We monster. set the trends. That's monster. They wear what we wear. They listen to what we yeah, listen to. Yeah. Gary, you read my lines. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. That is your line. My fault. <laughs> and then you, whoever is presenting with me, they start reading it. And then they go, Gary, you're up. I go, no, I've said enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I pitched it like this. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Crickets. Nothing. I you figure they, they would like listen to like comics that are doing it, like run it by us real quick, you know? Yep. Probably be like, yep. Might work. Because sometimes I'll be at the shows and you've been the BET words. God, some of that shit falls flat in the room. Like, and I know, you know what the goal death, is? Death. Oh, that's a, that's a. People start I, looking around like. That's what, that, some of those award shows are like, uh, BET awards are, are fun to host because it, it's, it's a party vibe. But like once, one year I saw Cedric hosting um, like the AMAs or some shit in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at it going. Oh, Soul Train. He hosted Soul Train. This wasn't Soul Train. This was like mainstream okay, stuff. Okay, okay. And it was one of them where you had white kids in the pit down below and they just want to see the artist. They right. don't want to hear anything. I was like this, that's a hell gig. I'm watching yeah. Cedric, yeah. and we all know Cedric is tried and true. And I'm watching, and Cedric's so good with it though, because he just, he'll say something, but he ain't getting none. Yeah, man, all right, let's <laughs> give it up for Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> he powered through that shit, and I was like this. I was just like, only Cedric, because if I'm up there, it's sweat beat. Yeah, bing, yeah, bing, yeah, bing, yeah, bing. yeah. gotta be yeah. like this. He gets hurt laughing at shit. <laughs> I was like, the MTV Awards to me looks like a hell gig to oh, host. Oh yeah, yeah. As a comedian, yeah. it, mm -hmm. it used to be better back in the day though. It used to be like who my brother hosted it was great one year. Oh, when Eddie hosted uh, it, it was great. Yeah, yeah. But just now it seems more like it's just not. They don't care. <sighs> Remember the the when the Wayans hosted that was rough. When they went out there, I was like this. Ooh. I was like, that's what I said. I go, I, w I don't know if I'd take it. I'd be like, what's the angle here? You know what I want to host? I want to host the B. I don't know why. I want to host the BET Hip Hop Awards. Yeah, they just got I 85 to host, South. I wanted to host the. Yeah, that's a, that's a good look for them. That's a real good look for them. I saw them posted yeah. on their social media. That's a shout out yeah. to those brothers. That's a real good look. Uh, I wanted to host the BET Awards for years. For years. I, I was like, come on, man. Like, why is my name not in the hat? And I had ideas and stuff I wanted to do the intro and all that. Now it's like, yo, I want to host the Hip Hop Awards. Yeah. I don't know well, why. Do it soon, Look, I'm, I don't older. know why. It might be a hell gig. You're right. <laughs> Look, it might be a hell gotta, gig, <laughs> but I just, I'm like, yeah. Well, I saw, you know, I was. And I'm probably too old because I don't even like some of the guys that would be nominated now. I don't even know some of the people that would be nominated now. Yeah, and you're wondering, do they even get my jokes? Right. Because right. sometimes I'll be, sometimes you'll be in the room with some, of, even athletes. Man, I'll be like, wow, I don't have a lot in common with these guys. Well, athletes is different. Athletes just, they got no personality. Yeah. A lot of athletes have no personality. Yeah. You ever talk to a football player, like a real, like, you're like, dude, this guy just, oh, you don't, you don't do shit. You just, <laughs> well, you don't really know the world, huh? Let's, let's segue that into sports. God, my podcast is so awesome. We segue perfectly. <laughs> no, we Steelers, was talking. baby. Ah, this fucking guy. 4-0. Well, who they? Yeah, exactly. Who they? That's, that's a Bengal stadium right there. Look right at it. There. Look at it. That's playoffs. <laughs> no, that, that's the fourth quarter of a Steeler game. <laughs> we, we already left. Well, we're stupid. Yeah, you want to go Fuck. get some chili? Of any team, I'm just like, it was, let me tell you what goes through my brain. As soon as we drafted Joe Burrow, I went, I just don't want the Steelers to hurt him. Because you hurt, <laughs> you ruin, you don't just, you don't just beat us. It's like you ruin the whole season. Carson Palmer. That was the 2005. We we matched up. What was that? We, uh, ankle, knee? Nah, it was knee, yeah, ACL. Knee. And ex Bengal did it that we cut, that the, that uh, the Steelers yeah, picked uh, up. Uh, Kimo uh, von uh, Ohlhoff. Von, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. I was going to say to Samoan, you said his name perfectly. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget that fucker's name. <laughs> <laughs> Kimo von Ohlhoffen. <laughs> fucking. I like to call him bitch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ruin that game. You know, we, we opened the fucking game with a 66 yard bomb Means and i'm like nothing. oh god it's no. this that was the year we had your fucking number I beat you in pittsburgh and then that and then here we go we're freaking like 10 and 1 steelers come to town and andy broke his thumb oh, on yeah, a free yeah, play and i was yeah, like this yeah, yeah. 
And then I don't want to talk about that playoff. You were with me when uh, the Steelers beat the Bengals. Where were we? We were in Phoenix roasting Alabama and Clemson. Right, 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 right. Do you remember me, you, Anthony Anderson, Faison, and Ron G were all together to do a comedy slash roast of Alabama and Clemson? Yeah, the day before the game. Right? Two days before the game. Two days before the game. Yeah. So this is Saturday. Here's, what, here's what's fucked up. And that was this. a good Clemson team. That was the Sean. Oh, yeah. That was Alabama with Derrick Henry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I got, yep. still got pictures of them. In. Yep. That was that was 2016. Yeah. And I, I'll never forget when the playoff, when came, Steelers weren't supposed, to be in, weren't supposed to be in the playoffs. Today. I don't even remember. The Bills beat the Jets, or the Jets beat the Bills the last game. Got to get the Steelers us in. in the playoffs. Okay. okay. And they're like, either the Bills sucked or the Jets. No. Yeah, the Jets were going to make the playoffs. And the Bills beat them the last week, and that got the Steelers in. Okay. Uh, and the Bills had nothing to play for. And I was like this. Because as soon as that happened, I, I remember calling all my friends. I go, we're fucked. And they go, what do you mean? I go, it doesn't matter who wins. They're going to come out of that game beat up. And that's exactly what happened because you guys mm-hmm. got waxed by Denver because oh, yeah, yeah, Antonio yeah. Brown was out. Yeah. Everybody, you got, we, we beat you up, but you won the game. And I was like this. I knew it. I knew it <laughs> as soon as I was like this. But, okay, so we, we did – the way the playoffs were set up, I didn't want to work that weekend. That's, right. That's how I was available. I go, no, 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 The Bengals are going to playoffs. I'm off. I'm going to the right, game. Right, And then they gave me the, that game. I go, okay, as long as it's not the late game on Saturday, I'm fine because we were on the West Coast. So right. I was like – and then the playoff schedule came out. I go, yeah, the 8 o'clock game on Saturday is Bengals. See, I went – why would you do that? Why would you do that? If it's the early game Saturday, we're in Phoenix. I could still watch it and then go roast the teams. If it's Sunday, we're fine. I'm like, only game that we're actually working. And I go, there's four games that we get. And then we Oh, wrote, I remember that because we were checking the scores during the, Yeah. Yeah, we were in the hotel lobby of Alabama's hotel. And then it was it was like a couple field goals, nothing big. Then we went over to roast Clemson. Right. And I'm I remember they set up that TV. Oh, we had the bus. We took the bus over, right? Yeah, and we they had that TV set up, and I was just watching. And then I went up and came off at his fourth quarter, and I got off right before AJ caught that pass. Yes, and we yes, took the yes. lead, and yes. And remember, Clemson was all behind us watching the game yeah, with us. Yeah, and I literally had my phone. And I was like, I had Clemson behind me. And I'm like, yeah, it's all about the Tigers today, baby. <laughs> Bengals, Clemson Tigers. I go, we in this. And then Jeremy Hill fumbled the ball and went, delete. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's no way this is happening. And I, there wasn't a doubt you guys are going to drive down the I field I remember standing there with the football with the Clemson players. And they watching the TV behind me. And I just hear them like, they big country dudes. Oh, man, they about to get up in them now. Oh, man, going down now. <laughs> All oh, them boys ain't got a prayer. Now, I'm like, this, these dudes are weird. They're yeah. just, just weird. Like, there's no football commentary. Like, oh, he on now. Yeah. Oh, that boy done now. No well, more. you remember I ran I, when when uh, Vontez intercepted yes. Ben. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. ran back on the stage. Like, you guys want to do another fucking show? <laughs> let's do it. I was like, the curse is over. I was like, come on, let's do it. I'm ready to tell jokes, man. Let's do something. <laughs> and then when he Jeremy fumbled that ball, I just put my head down. There wasn't Steelers, a baby. doubt you guys are going to score. We haven't beat you since then. Do you know that? Really? We haven't. Since 2016? That's the last time we Ooh. beat the Steelers was in Pittsburgh. A 2015 season, the first game, because then you guys came to Cincy back like in November, and that's when Andy got hurt, and you guys right, beat us. Right. And then um, the playoff game, we haven't beat you since. Wow. 16, 17, 18. Wow. It's like 10 in a row. Nice. Nice. So as soon as we got Burrow, I was like, okay. So they have they knocked out Palmer. They knocked out Dalton. I'm like this. Can we just just hand off 50 <laughs> plays? There's no, and our line is so bad. There's no doubt Bur- Is Burrow's your offensive line bad? It's the worst in the NFL. Really? He's been sacked like 30 times in five games. Not good. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, so we're probably going to hurt him. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to play. Yeah, we're dude. probably going to hurt him. When do we play? Like in three weeks, two, three weeks. Yeah, we got Bengals got Indy this week. Well, we'll week. see because everything's getting moved around with the corona. So right, we, right, We right. didn't play Tennessee last week, so. Yeah. but um, We got to make that game up. I don't want that to happen, man. Fuck. There's pictures of me on the red carpet. Me, you, Faison, and Anthony, I'm not smiling. <laughs> I'm literally at the ESPN, I'm like... And I'm cheesing. Hey, oh, you fuckers. Steelers. Motherfuckers. <laughs> you, ever, you ever went to a Super Bowl that they were in? 
Uh, no, never going to a Super Bowl. They were in. I was going to go to Arizona that year, but uh, I was filming something. I forgot. Uh, I have a few. Fr- like I'm, I have. I don't have a lot of sports friends, but the ones I do have, I've had long, long time. Uh, my man Mike Logan used to play for the Steelers. Back yeah, Mike's cool dude, man. Great guy, great guy. I go to Pittsburgh. He shows up, lets me hold a ring, lets me wear the ring in the yeah. club. We, we talk, and I've he, done that before with him. Yeah, I'm with the, the ring. Coolest <laughs> dude, man. The coolest guy. But see, you, nobody would believe you're on the team. They believed <laughs> I was like the long snapper. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, super cool dude. But every every year, I'm like, I hit him, I send him an email, just make sure it's still, yo, still your email, still there? Yeah, still there, bro, anytime you come down. Uh, William Gay. Yeah, cool William Gay. Cool as hell, dude, cool yeah. as hell. I met him at the uh, Savoy, you know, you go to the Savoy. Yeah, the Pittsburgh. Chuck Sanders spot. Yeah, yeah. He met him at the Savoy, and uh, he brought me, he let me come to practice. They gave me a They're bunch like of, that. They gave me a bunch of Steelers stuff. They're like, oh, he met the coach, like, yo, he's a big fan, man. They run their team like they're supposed to run. That's That's been my beef with Cincinnati forever is... You go to a you go to a Steeler game. Yeah, I go. You, you got the terrible towels. They always like they they focus in on like if there's a celeb in town. Yeah, they take extra good care of them. They show them showing the towel, whether it's whatever Steeler fan is Billy Gardell or mm-hmm. Snoop or um, that guy that's ripped up from Magic Mike Vergara's husband. Who's that? My, it's something like I feel, I feel awful. I don't know his name. Joe Mangelio. Joe Mangelio. You know he's a huge Steeler fan. Yeah, but they just take care of their guys. And I always and I'm like, why does Cincinnati not? <laughs> you don't have anybody. You I got remember, Nick like, Lachey and me, homie. Nick That's Lachey, it. Uh, arm singer. Yeah, he's from Cincy. Oh, really? They did a thing. People Magazine or somebody did a thing on the the most famous the most famous celebrities of every team. And Nick Lachey got it. Bengals. I was a little. I was a little hurt. <laughs> I was like this. I'm, I think I'm bigger than him. But here's the crazy. <laughs> the day the day they invited me to the uh, Pittsburgh facility for practice. This was years, a couple of years ago. Uh, I saw William Gay that night in the club, and he's like, "Yo, come to the, come practice tomorrow." And I'm like, "You sure, man? Like, dude, I'll leave your name at the front. You good? I get there. They're like, "Yeah, Mr. Rock, they're expecting you. Walk me in, meet everybody, see Ben, coaches, all that. Uh, meet Tomlin. He's like, uh, "Yeah, you got to meet so and so, so and so. AB's not here yet. AB'll be here in a little while, right? <laughs> I'm there for an hour and a half. I leave. AB's still not there." So I'm walking back to the car like, yo, that dude just didn't show up for practice? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and as I'm driving off the facility, I see a black uh, wraith. Yeah. And I'm like, that's AB. Like, <laughs> the is late for practice. Like, he just didn't say, he didn't give a fuck. <laughs> we wonder. Tomlin is the coolest. Yeah. When you meet him in person? Yeah. Because he doesn't smile in a Short, quick conversation. You know, he's busy. Yeah. Hey, nice to meet you, young fella. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for representing the Steelers. Yeah, okay, cool. Go on. Yeah. Well, Make sure you take him to see so-and-so. I roasted him back in 2009 in training camp. Me and a T row, you know T row out of Pittsburgh. Yeah. So we roasted them, and then I get there, and you know they're they're in Latrobe, and then uh, everybody met everybody on the team. But then Tomlin came up like a, like a kid almost. He saw he goes hey like you know because he's always so stoic mm-hmm. in the press conference. He was like hey what's up man thanks for coming <laughs> I go wow you're completely different off camera he was like jolly yeah. <laughs> hey man appreciate it. anything you want man and you want some food and da, da, da. so this is classic Bengal Steelers I've roasted eight NFL teams right like training camp I did the Ravens Ravens took great care of us right did the Steelers done the Texans did the Bengals the now the Bengal I did the Dolphins Dolphins was great the Bengals I go there. This is when Marvin was there, and they, they was in Georgetown, Kentucky. Usually, they'll do the roast like during the rookie show. Right, 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 right. And when I did Steelers, you know, they let us sit in the back. We watched the rookie show. It was funny. Uh, it, was, it was cool just to be a part of it. And then me and Tiro went up afterwards, and we roasted the guys and yeah. told some jokes. Bengals, they wouldn't let me watch the rookie show. I'm standing oh, wow. outside the door like I'm a convict. Hold on. Here's what's funny. When I get there... I know half the team. I sit in the cafeteria with them, and I'm just bullshit with them. I grabbed a fucking banana. I didn't get anything else to eat. I got, grabbed the banana. I go, hey, 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 what are you doing? The guy stopped me. I go, I'm, I'm going to eat a banana. He goes, who are you? And like the, all the players like, yo, man, relax. He's with us. <laughs> all right. So hold on. I'm just trying to think that security guy. I'm like, I'm sitting here clearly talking to like Hushman Zada, right, right, Dwayne right. Clemens, Ojo. Like, we're cutting yeah. up. Why would you think <laughs> I'm some random fan that showed up? When they stop, when they feel like not yeah, talking to me. You think I made it this Yo. far into the facility? <laughs> so then the rookie show's over. I couldn't watch it. Then I walk through this door 
and I walk out there, they don't have a stage or a microphone or nothing. I'm just talking like a, just like a teacher, yeah. right? So it was fun, but I went off on the security guy, and then it was funny because the whole team was like, that guy is kind of a dick, <laughs> like the coaches. <laughs> but it ended up being fun, but I was just like, and then later on, Marvin, when Marvin Lewis was there, his secretaries called me, and he, they were, he, was getting, uh, he was getting roasted. They asked me to help him write the roast so I could write jokes for him. I said, cool. So I'm thinking this is my end now. I'm right, good. Right, right. Help him write the roast. The next season, I call the secretary. I go, hey, um, I'm in town. Can I come to the game this week? She goes, oh, we're out of tickets. I went, what? Hold on. I didn't charge you. I wanted nothing for helping you write that roast. And I called. And they was like, yeah, we're out. So then I go to the game. I see Chad and TJ there. They were doing the 50-year anniversary. So then Chad and TJ like, hey, come hang on the suite with us. I go, all right. Because I had regular seats. So I'm in the suite. Here comes the secretary. She had a blank look on her face. And I looked at her. I go, I guess the seat opened up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, Zach Taylor, uh, when I roasted the Dolphins, he was a quarterback coach. Yeah. He found out about me and reached out personally. And nice. so now he was nice. like, dude, once this COVID shit's over, man, he goes, I want come down. I got you. You want tickets? I just You can come down to practice. But it's just COVID. I, right. So the, it is a right. new regime. So I really want to see Zach Taylor do well because I don't want the new coach to come in and be like this. I don't know him again. And you can't eat a banana. <laughs> <laughs> I did the only roast I did was for the Raiders, and this was so dope. Like in Napa, let me tell you. Yes. So uh, this was when Hugh was the coach, right? And uh, you know, I swear, like I stay, I stay so much in my own world that I don't really realize that people know me sometimes. Mm -hmm. So Hugh's people reach reach out, and I'm like, who? who what? Like, yeah, he's this guy, uh, Hugh Jackson, the coach of the Raiders. I'm like, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, he's a big fan of yours, and he wants you to come up and do the roast for the – do the, uh, the the rookie – host the rookie show? talent show. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. And it's like, yeah, they'll fly you up, you and a guest. And I'm like, what? They're going to put you up? You're going to Napa all this? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. So my boy Tone, my man from the Bronx, he is biggest Raider fan on the planet. I call him up like, yo, son, don't ever say I ne didn't, never did nothing for you. <laughs> I got you, yo. Meet me at the crib tomorrow, whatever time. Bring up overnight bag. Boom. Where we going? Yo, just come on. We get on the plane. He don't know where we going. We land. They pick us up. Where we going? They drive us up to Napa. We get there. He's like, get the fuck out of here. Hugh comes out like, oh, man, big fan. Big fan. So excited to have you. I'm still like, get the fuck out. Like, Hugh knows me. That's cool. Mm -hmm. We get there. The, the facility is incredible. You been? Not in Napa. It's in, they own, it's on a vineyard. Yeah, hold where, on. You're where lying. We're Something's nice in Napa. Where we're, <laughs> <laughs> where we're doing the show is on the vineyard. It's mm. incredible. The food is incredible. They're like, you know, you can taste the wines. You can try, try as many wines as you want. They start the rookie show. They bring, Hugh introduces me, brings me up. And I'm like, uh, the rhythm of the Raiders are sucking. This was like their sucky years. Yeah. And I say, uh, this is very nice, man. This is so, I'm like riffing at first. I'm like, this is so nice. This is too nice for how you guys are playing. <laughs> Why would they spend this much money on the what, the what you guys have done over the last few years? We should not be here. We should be in the parking lot of an in and out right now we doing be this. in Richmond. And they just like the players like, "Oh." And then one dude walks in late. I don't know who this dude is. Big, gigantic, black like your shirt with a black shirt on. And I go, "Look at this motherfucker got the nerve to come in here late." I don't know if this motherfucker's topless or if he has a black T-shirt on. That's how. And the play, oh, they just fall out. Coaches dying laughing. I see coaches red in the face, and I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be hosting this rookie show, but I, I, I should just keep going. And he was like, keep going, and I end up doing like a half hour. Yeah. Before I say, let's start the show. Shows over. Players come like, yo, you funny as shit, bro. Yo. And then he was like, dude, anytime you want to come, you could do this every year. I'm going to have you every year. And every year you come back. And I'm like, every year? Like, this is the Raiders, bro. Like, let's see what happens. Right. <laughs> One was, season. He gone. was gone. I know what I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks because I'm... When Zach Taylor called me, I'm the same way. I'm like, come on, you guys got to win. I need this guy to be the coach. <laughs> and look, I told him, I said, I said, coach, you know I'm a Steelers fan, but I, I really had a great time. Hopefully everything goes you know, well with the team. And I would call him. We kept, he's like, keep in contact. No, I, I mean it. Call me. Here's my number. Like, yeah. really? I know how some people are. So every once in a while, they, I'd check the scores and they won a game. I'd be like, hey, coach, good one. Like, good, good win for you guys. Or I would text him. That was a good game today. He'd be like, hey, call me, man. I would call him. Like, yo, it was a good win. I saw it on uh, Sports Center, you know. And then the end of the season, when he said, uh, Next year, it's going to be a lot of changes. I'm making a lot of changes. And I text him, like, hey, good luck next year, coach. Uh, you know, and a couple of weeks later, you and he, went, he went eight and eight. He actually had a good season. Out. 
Yeah. Then he went to Cleveland. He caught. It was funny. We go to when he got hired in Cleveland. You obviously know Brad, my road manager. Do you know Say, little Asian dude? Yeah, that of course. Up for me yeah. a lot. Say him. Yeah, Say him. Say goes. We go to we go to the uh, Cleveland facility, right? I don't know who we knew over there. Somebody we knew. But was he was it a kid from the improv? It's a kid that used to work at the Cleveland Improv whose father is like. No, no, I need somebody the in, okay, in, okay. The, in the organization. But anyways, they, they, we, I went down there, and uh, Hugh just got hired as the coach. And Say had a Cincinnati Reds hat on. And Hugh just came from Cincinnati right. and came to Cleveland. So Hugh walks in and goes, who let this guy in here? He's a Cincinnati guy. Talking about me. And I go, what's up, man? And then we you know, dab it up. And then he goes, you got to take that hat off. And Say goes, man. <laughs> yeah, right. He goes, no, seriously. Take that hat off. I was like this, take the fucking hat off, say. <laughs> I was like, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> it, it, was, it was the oddest thing I'd ever seen because she was, had the smile like, and he goes, no, nah, you, you're going to take the hat off. But I got he was trying to change the culture. Like, you don't right, right. come in here with a Cincinnati hat on in Cleveland. But it was so awkward there for about 30 seconds. You serious, man? Yeah, like, say like, cutting oh, up. Like, yeah, serious. come on, yeah. man. And he goes, no, nah, no, nah, take the hat off. <laughs> I was like... Oh, this just got weird. But he thought he was the one that started the you have to earn your stripe on the helmet and all yeah. that. Yeah, I was like trying to change the culture. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Culture didn't change. Now, what um last year, was it no, it was like three years ago. You shot a pilot. Uh, it clearly didn't get picked up. Uh when's the last time you shot a pilot that didn't get picked up for like network? I did uh oh for ABC, I did uh the untitled Judah Miller project. And that was like 2016? And, and it didn't get picked 15? up. Fifteen? No, it was probably Let's say about, I'll say 16, yeah. Did, um, do you have to audition? Yes. Because I'll never forget, I, I spent two years, 2015 and 2016, doing the whole come out for pilot season because I was mm-hmm. living in L.A. Mm-hmm. I remember I was, I was staying at the Residence Inn by LAX because Damn. I was out here for two months. Right. You know what I mean? Now everybody I tell that to, like, why didn't you call me? You could have stayed with me. Like, <laughs> Rus- like Russell Peters. Yeah. He'll be like, Dude, you're an idiot. <laughs> you could have stayed at the house like this. I just don't like to put people out. Right, you know? right. And so I don't know how people like their shit, so I don't want to disturb. Yeah, their, you never know how yeah, people are living. Right. Russ is great. Russ has helped me out since the podcast. Like I stay at his house ninety percent of the time. I believe Russ puts everybody up. Yeah, he's great. But uh, I'll never forget. I'm audition after audition after audition, and then I'd been on the road with you. Also, we were touring with Epps at the time. Right, I think we were right. one of the tours we was on. And then I remember like. Got called back on a couple, blah, blah, blah. But I go, I literally went two years and didn't land anything and got some callbacks. And then I remember you posted a picture and I was like, that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, what did he do that I didn't? Because you know, Wait, they, for the same project? No, 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 oh, no. Oh. It's just pilot season fucks right, with your head. Right. It really fucks with your head. And you're just like, what the fuck? You're not mad at you. Right. But you're like, what did Tony do that I didn't do <laughs> to get this shit? Or who does he know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I re- I've rarely had shit just given to me. I, it's always audition. The yeah. only, only job I had given to me was uh, Apollo when I hosted Apollo. Mm-hmm. Jamie Foxx came to the Laugh Factory one night, sat upstairs, watched me host Chocolate Sunday, mm-hmm. called me two days later like, yo, come to the house. And here's the crazy story. I'll, I'll go into the long version. Calls, me, calls my phone. I don't have Jamie's number, right? So my phone rings, random number. I'm like... Don't answer. Like, second, third time, I'm like, okay, this person's clearly trying to get in touch with me. I answer the phone. Yo, yo, Rock, what's up? Who's this? It's Fox. Excuse me. You know Joe Fox? Comedian Joe Fox? Yeah. That's my man, 100 grand. Uh Name and the phone and everything. So I'm thinking it's Joe Fox. And I call Fox, Joe Fox. I call Joe Fox, Fox Boogie. So he's like, yo, this Fox. I'm like, Boogie? He said, yeah. (laughs) I said, what's up, man? He's like, yo, uh, you you busy? Come to the house, man. I want to talk to you about something. I have never been to Joe Fox's house. So I'm like, who the fuck is this? It's like, it's Fox. Joe? <laughs> and he's like, what? I hang up the phone. <laughs> A few minutes later, phone rings, same number. Yo, yo, Rock, this is Jamie. Jamie who? Jamie Fox. I'm like, oh, oh, shit, what's up, man? What, what? And he's like, yo, come to the house. I want to talk to you about something. And I'm like, all right, send me your address. And he says, shocked. You never been to my house? And I'm like, no. Just the one up in the, on the, the hill? Yeah, the one that everybody talks about. Yeah. Wait, all the parties I've had, you never been to my house? No. Why have you never been to my house? I said, because you've never invited me. <laughs> I'm not going to nobody's house unless that man invites me. That's yeah. a, it's a Brooklyn thing. I'm, you don't set foot in nobody's house unless that man invites you. Yeah. 
Same thing with Eddie. When Eddie's, I see Eddie's people at the factory or the improv or the store, they're like, yo, why you never come to Eddie's house for the fights? Because Eddie never called me. Right. You guys invite me all the time. Eddie never called me. Yeah. It's a Brooklyn thing. So Jamie sends the address. I go to his house. We sitting there talking. He says, uh, so you, you remember Showtime at the Apollo, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, dope. It was a dope ass show. I'm bringing it back. I'm, I'm EPing it. I'm bringing it back. First thing in my mind is like, Jamie's a little too big to be hosting Apollo. Like, why would he? That's not like, yeah. a, that's not like an upward move for him. That's, like, that's not even lateral for him. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm like, really? Okay. So you're just going to, you just going to, you got time to host it? What you? And he's like, no, you're hosting it. And I'm like, oh, all right. So what do I, I'm thinking there's a process. I got to audition. I got to send a tape in. So what do, you, what do you need me to do? Nothing. You, you got it. I saw you at the factory Sunday. You, you, perfect host. What year was this? 2000 and... 10? Yeah, I was going to say, that's, a, that's been a minute. Yeah, and just handed me a gig. Right. But pilot season, I got to audition. I got to call back, call back, call back. I, yeah. It's a process. I ha- I'll, I'll, I, I'm not doing pilot season. What right I now. do, I audition, and I totally don't give that shit a second thought once I walk out the room. I'm, I commit to what the lines are. Like, this is my, I'm going to do it this way. Because sometimes you will, should I say it like this? Should I do it? Like this? Once I make the commitment, this is how I'm going to do it? Fuck it. I'm doing it that way. And I yeah. walk out, don't think nothing of it. Well, I did, you know, I did it for two years. Did the whole thing, and then um, you know, because you're you're comedian, so we go w- first. You do the whole thing. They your agent pairs you up with a writer. You go pitch your own shit. Right. But then when the problem is when you, it's you know it's part of the game, but not problem. But you fu- your own head starts fucking with you because you pitch a show that you think is a good idea, and as a comedian, just like you were telling me your your BET award stuff that's funny. I was mm-hmm. like, well, why wouldn't they do that? And then right. My thing, like, why wouldn't they do that? So in your brain, when you go pitch to a network, you know, you can only, you only can give so much of the show in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're right. pitching, so you're like this, that's, ah, oh, we didn't do that. You leave there like, we didn't harp right, on this right, and this and right. this. So you, then they, when they pass on it and then you start getting the scripts that they picked up, you're like, what? What the fuck? Why yeah. would they pass on mine and do this? And but I'm you, sure. And then you hear this guy has a deal with so-and-so, so they he's in the, in the loop to yeah. get his shit picked up. Even if it's horribly... Written and way yeah. worse than your idea. He has a deal with so and so, and he's a friend of whatever. That's why the problem with, with, with comedy is the people that are in control of it aren't funny. True. That's the number one problem yeah. with, with comedy across the board is the people that are, run it aren't funny. Yeah, and that I mean that's why I think nowadays I was oh, I think I was talking to a guy about that was uh you know back when we was coming up I mean you everybody can tell you their favorite Martin episode their favorite right. Fresh Prince episode and good times and Jamie Foxx and all that. But uh, nowadays, there's just, it's not as good. But, guy, because you got to realize back then, you were getting the A list, right? You were getting eight A list writers on one mm-hmm. show. Now everything's so spread out. Right. You might have one great writer on the show. Right. Yeah, so that's why eight, it's not as good. Those eight writers have their own deals and mm-hmm. they're all trying to put a show together. That's, yeah. You know. Or you do Kenya Barris, just put yourself on the that's show. That's a fucking good ass show. I, I started Which watching one? it recently, uh, uh, Black as Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a fucking good ass show, man. I just, yeah. I, my man uh, just put me onto it. I watched like the whole season in two days. That shit is. But good. you know, Kenya knows. Ken, I haven't worked with him yet, but he hires a lot of comedians. You know, it's funny. I, I, I have season tickets for the Clippers. Kenya sits like five rows in front of me, like three seats over. So whenever he gets up to go, you know, get snacks or whatever, he walks right past. Every week, it's like all we do is this. He looks at me, I go. So I'm like, I don't want to bother him. He's probably like, I'm just saying what's up. Yeah. But every once in a while, I'm like, damn, like, what's this motherfucker? I want, I want him to just stop and go, hey, man, uh, what you want to yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you got something, you got something going. So I'm going to go, yo, I got this, this script, man. I want to, yeah. you, you, you can just take Comics a look always at got it. ideas. Yeah. We always got ideas. I got a script on the, on the, on the, on the shelf right yeah. now at home. I'm just like, if he just stopped for a second, I'd be like, yo, man, I don't want to bother you. But, you know, that's my thing. I, like, I'm always like, I don't want to bother people. That's my, that's my thing when I lived at the residence inn. Yeah. <laughs> all, like this. All the comments I know that I knew had room are just actors like this. No. That's a lot. I did that with Kyle Grooms. You know Kyle Grooms? Yeah. Kyle Grooms comes to LA and he hits me up one time. This is when I just got to crib in, in uh downtown. And he's like, uh, yeah, hey, hey, man. And he took care of me when I'm when I'm in Miami, he takes care of me. So yeah. I, I let let you know that off top. So he called, hey man, I'm in my I'm in uh LA, man. What you doing? I'm like, what, what you need something? What, what you staying? I'm staying over at the nah, fuck that, bro. Stay at the crib. You sure, man? And I was leaving like two days later to go on the road. Mm-hmm. He comes to the crib. I'm like, yo, here's car keys. Here's whatever you need. You, you sure, man? Dude, house is yours. Run to the house. You're good. 
He leaves like, damn, man, I really appreciate that, man. Leaves shit. I come back, he leaves like folded sheets that he washed and here's the pillow. <laughs> he seems like that. Kyle like, seems he's like that. He's that dude. That. Dishes that he ate off, yeah. washed and stacked right here. <laughs> not in the not in the dish, in the dish trainer, just like stacked to the side. Oh, Tony, it's like when you go to Starbucks and they got the used pins yeah, and yeah, the sanitized yeah, yeah, pins. Yeah. Kyle's like, I actually washed yeah. my ass with his, this towel. But I, washed I ate yeah. his <laughs> towels. And then, like, maybe, like, a month later, he hits me, like, hey, man, I'm, I'm back in town, man. I'm like, bro, you good. Come to the crib. You sure, man? You, you good, bro. You right. Good. You it's kept like it clean. Yeah, he, he keeps it clean. He, he's a guy that you could let stay with you. I had a comedian uh, one time. I'm not going to call him out. I'll tell you off camera. I had a comedian stayed for – he was out here trying to get his name out there. And I'm living with my wife. Mm. And we have – my this is before we had kids. We had our oldest, my stepson, right? Right. So we got a, a nine-year-old in this townhouse we're living in, and my buddy's like, we had an extra room there. He goes, yo, I'm trying to you know, get my name in there. Can I come stay for like a month? And I said, cool. I said, only rule, you can't bring no girls to the house. We got a kid here, right? Right. And Fuck. you got your wife there. Yeah. How about, couldn't make it a day. We woke up the first day, and I go, I think I hear a female. And my, my brain, I'm going... Is he on the phone or I heard a female in the room? I get a shower, come out. This girl's sitting on the couch. Wow. Like, just sitting there. Hey, I was like this. Day one? As my boys would say, the disrespect. Right. First <laughs> day? That was the only room we had. I was like, get a room or go to her place. Did you speak? Did, what, what was his excuse? He was gone. I said, dude, I, I'm not trying to be a dick, but you can't stay here. I go, no, I got to hear about this. Right. I go, you got to go. Like, wow, we, we let him stay that one night. And then, he, so he stayed two nights. He was, he was supposed that's to be out for a month. Crazy. I think he flew back to uh, Atlanta. I was like this, dude, first hmm, night? Atlanta, let me, uh, who would that be? Who would oh, that, nah, I'll tell you off camera. Okay, okay. I'm okay. not going to call him out because he's a good guy, but he just. LeVar Walker. Wasn't, no, that wasn't <laughs> LeVar. <laughs> but. That's the homie. <laughs> if, he, if he sees this podcast, he's going to know what was Exactly, him, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. But he was young and stupid, but I was just, I'll never forget, I go, First day out the box, bro? Damn. It'd be different if it was like, like day 29. It, he, you said it and he was like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever. Shorty, come yeah. through. It's, it's, it was almost like a, uh, a comedian, comedian, you know, they'll open up for you and you'll be like, hey, uh, you might not touch it on this because I'm working on something. And yeah, 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 and then they do it. You're like, I just, no, you know what? When you thing. tell them, they do that. Oh you got to not say anything and just hope they don't fucking touch that subject. Because you tell them, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's, it's, that, it's, that, it's that underlying competition of stand-up comedy. Yeah. And in some cases, it's that underlying hate. Yeah. Is that there we, anybody? Um, everybody. I, is everybody. there anybody? Go ahead. I, Hold on. No, is I, there I don't any, say names. No, when you're on the road, and is there anybody, like, when we got those big shows together, is there anybody you don't like going after? You're like, fuck. Oh, no, 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 no. I thought you were gonna say something else, but nah, nah. Because uh, because I, you know, I, I'm following my brother every time I touch a microphone, so to speak. True. Whether he's there or not, I'm every time Tony Rock touches the mic, it's like, oh really, Chris Rock's brother? So I'm following yeah. him every time I go on stage. So I never thought of that. Whoever goes on before me is no big deal. I'm following. So if I start stealing catalytic converters, I'm following my brother <laughs> like this. Dude, you don't do that near as good as your brother. <laughs> your brother was bringing in 15 a night. dollars <laughs> Your brother can do 15 a night. You got six? Sorry, man. He's a little quicker than I am. You got caught first day out the box. We had a bull on him for six months. This guy was on the run. Catalytic converters. Yeah. Good for you. I always, uh, Roxy asked me that uh, last week, Roxy Diaz, and she goes, there's anybody like you don't like? I go, nah, you got to rise. And we're on the shows. I, I respect Epps so much because he doesn't put anything on you. He's like, do you, do your time, and he just get, does his thing. You know, I've worked with other headliners mm -hmm. that they'll, be like, they'll come in. I'll be like, Jesus Christ, can I knock, knock? Knock, knock, jokes, yeah, yeah. right? I don't, I don't give people like, I've learned over time. I don't, I don't, I fucked up what you said. Hey, man, you might not talk about this. Yeah. I, it's probably been 15 years since I've done it to anybody. I'm like this. I just stopped watching stand up. Like, I don't ever watch your set uh -huh. or anybody else's that's going up because I've seen comics get on the side of the stage and they get in their head because somebody might be destroying and you're going, ah, oh, fuck. Right, right, so right. So I just right. stay in my dressing room and I'm like, I just stay. Once, once some more I hear her go up, I'm like this. All right. Because you got, you got the volume in the dress room, you can yeah. hear it. My shit's on so low, 
It's like a dentist's office. It's like little jazz music, and every now and then you hear a oh. this girl from yeah. Ipanema playing yeah. in the background. Yeah. You, hear a, you hear a good joke, you're like, oh, I go, oh, somebody just told a decent joke, I think. The My thing is different. I, I'm like, I'm, it's, okay, so the show is you, me, Quake. No, not even, it's you, Quake, Samoa, Mike, mm-hmm. and I happen to be on it. I'm so excited to be on the show. I'm just like, yo, this is dope. Like, I'm gonna watch some more. And I'm gonna watch Quake. And I'm gonna watch Gary. I'm gonna watch Mike. I'm just like, but you're some, you're in a I'm sweet like, spot too. Yeah. If you go, I always tell people, going up early is the best. Yeah. On those big shows, because if you got a uh, host like some more, who's I think one of the best hosts out there, she I gives go, me an incredible intro every time. Yeah, but she she. She puts the audience in a frame of mind. They are just ready for you. She's such a pro. Yeah. Because you know you've been to the ho- you've been there where the host will do forty minutes. You're like, dude, what are you doing? Just bring me up, or they bring you right up. So yeah, I don't you like that. Might I have don't, that am- I don't like. That I don't like. You might have an amazing last joke, and they're in hysterics, and the host goes, "All right, you know, for Gary Owen." You're like, I'm. They're still laughing off their right, chin yeah, joke. That I don't like. That I don't like. So more if somebody kills. She gives all, she does her thing, but she gets them in a pocket where they're breathing. Or if somebody doesn't do as well, she brings them back, back up. up. Yeah, that's a good I'm, host. That's man. A host supposed to keep the room at a level. Yeah. You blow it up, they bring it back to yep. know, the level, and then bring the next person up. You, yep. bring, you bring it down, they bring it back up, and then let you get it right there. There's, I mean, there's, you got to realize, there's a reason all the years we've been on the road, where the, whether Epps is the headliner or I'm the headliner or anybody else it's like there's a reason nobody's getting booed or bombing right because she keeps yeah. that wave going you know what i mean yep. Yep. i love when i see her hosting like this all right we're good it's gonna that then they, you know the show's gonna run smooth for one wayne's an intimidating guy <laughs> yeah. and like he yes. don't play that because there was one uh they wasn't they wasn't on the show they wasn't host you know the the promoter that does the sometimes the we tour. get those other shows that we get the side shows yeah, in the yeah. b yeah. markets right Yo, I was headlining, and I told the guy, I told the the promoter, I said, "Dude, I'm cool, but just make sure everybody sticks to their time." You you got me out here. Oh, I was on that. Wait, you was on that show. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that because I remember being backstage. Long. You were like, "Yo, what? He's on fucking." Yeah, yeah I remember. I, remember I that was one. hot. I, I remember that one. Out. I remember that one. Yes. I was hot. Yes. So I I was like this. What the fuck? And there's no host. They get like the radio guy. They had the radio. They had they had Mark. The freaking oh, that's tour right. promoter, that's right. the, the, yes. the, the tour manager. Yes, yes. And this is how he and brought he me up. And he was bringing everybody straight up. He would come up like, yeah. yeah. No, he goes, this is what he you said. You like that, huh? <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> We're going to keep it going. Like, this, yeah, that guy was funny. This guy's funny too. <laughs> Gary Owen. That's how, that's how he brought me up that night. <laughs> All right. Look, I don't want, you know what? I, I like it. Lavelle went long that night. I love Lavelle Crawford, by the way, but he went long that night. I remember. And I remember you, that show. It, was, it was a three man show. It was right. me, you, and Lavelle. And I, I even I messaged Lavelle, asked him to come on the podcast. Like, but I love Lavelle Crawford. Don't get twisted. Yeah, it's on me. But I said um, he went he went way long that night. And I called Brian. I go, <laughs> what's the one thing I asked you before we started this tour? I go, if I'm headlining, just make sure everybody sticks to their time. I go, what was that? Yeah. I go, and hold on. Even if Lavelle did go long. You, if you would have had some more, I'd have been all right. Right. Because they, right. she would have, da da da. But the fact that we have to be out of the venue at 11, oh, that's and now too, I'm yeah. going on at 10 40, and I'm like the headliner, but I'm like doing 15 minutes. Yeah, that's that what sucks. I'm, I'm like, dude, you got people like paid money and now they're, they feel shortchanged, you know? Yep. But I was just like, oh, God. Lavelle went so long that night. <laughs> I think oh he did like an hour. He's supposed to do 30. I know, I know at one point I remember you coming to my dressing room like, he's on 40 minutes. And I'm yeah, like, I'm like this. Damn, bro. He's supposed to do, he was supposed to do like 30. And he kept going. And then Was Mark it his kept, hometown? No, it was Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> There's <was> nothing there. <laughs> and then Mark's over here lighting him. And then Lavelle starts making fun of him. Look at this motherfucker over here with the light. <laughs> the white going, guy with this flash of his light. What the fuck, man? You're fucking me right now. <laughs> I was just like, and I like, he never did it again. He never did it one because I called Brian and I go, Brian, what the fuck, man? The one thing I asked you to do in the first show at the box, it happens. I go, because you know what I don't want to do? I don't want to feel like I'm going to work. I want right, to feel like right, it's right, fun. Right. I feel like I was at work. The 20 minutes <laughs> I was on stage, I was like this. Brian called me one time. This was, I, 
Brian like, Alden, the promoter. Yeah, like I say, I tell you, I, I don't bother anybody on the show. On, I go in my dressing room with my little freestyle crew, yeah. and I'm like, until it's time now to go. go you want some vodka? Go to Gary's room. Go ahead and <laughs> so, grab it. So uh, I'm on, this was like my first year on Mike's tour. And uh, like four or five cities in, Brian calls me. Hey, everything cool on the tour? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, just checking. I'm like, wait, did you hear something? Like, is there a problem? Because I was just going, doing my show and leaving, you know? No, just, you know, just say hi to Mike from, you know, every once in a while. I'm like, Okay, and I'm like, damn, I wonder, now I'm all in my head. Like, I wonder if Mike said something like I don't speak yeah. to him. Or I'm like, I'm not trying to be evasive or disrespectful. I just like leaving him in his own space. So then we're in like Houston, and Houston's my second home. And uh, Mike comes in with his group of people. I go in his room like, yo, yo, what up, man? You good? Oh, yeah, we going over here after this. What you doing tonight? He's like, oh, we going to head over to whatever party he's going to. All right, cool. You, you hosting? Yeah, yeah. All right, bet we talk for a few. And then Brian calls me like a few days later like, yeah, just, you know, just, just say hi to Mike every once in a while. I'm like... <laughs> Oh, and I, I want to act like, did he say something? But I'm like, maybe promote, maybe a Mark, promoter Mark said something, but I'm mm-hmm. like, that was a little weird. But now I'm just like, he comes in, yo, Rock, you good? Yeah, yeah, what's up? And I'm like, maybe he just felt like, but you never, on you the know, show, I should be saying something. No, I, I but you know. never know. Like you said, you can get in your head, and it and it can not be coming from Mike. It'd be coming from somebody with Mike, and you walked by him and didn't speak. Probably, yeah. And a lot of times, you know, comedians, we could be in our own heads. Like, we're getting on stage, so you're just kind of like, right, you right. know. Or, you know, like you said, if, if it's like, see, like Houston, you're second home and you want to rip, you want to do extra good yeah. in those places, yeah. you know? So you, it, you can always be in your head. You know, we're a, we're a weird bunch, very comedians. Weird. Very weird. We're, we're some sensitive very motherfuckers. Weird. Very sensitive, very weird. And I'm one of those guys, not every comic is like this, but I'm one of those guys that turns it off when I get off stage. Yeah. So people meet me and they're like, you know, Especially you don't, right when you you get don't, off you don't stage. seem very funny to be a comedian. I'm like, I'm not a comedian right now. I'm, I'm, I'm not on the clock. How about... When you, as soon as you get off stage and you always got that one one or two people that aren't on the tour that want a picture immediately. Yeah. Like you just yeah. step off stage. No, that's that's Mike's tour is like that every city. It's that group of that random group of people oh that are standing God, you're like, I just want to go. I, I always tell them, I gotta cool off. Yeah. You got I, off I stage, you sweat and you're just taking your jacket off. It's like, yo, can I get one? It's like yeah. I, I, all right. Let me get this okay. shot, man. Yeah. Or they don't ask. Yo, you know we gotta get this <laughs> shot. No, we don't. We don't have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're coming. Off, like one step the, off, and they're right there. The, like, hey, the demographic of that tour is yeah. everybody's like that. <laughs> Even women. Tony Rock, take this picture. Oh shit, yeah. I, I guess I got to take this picture. Right. One city we were in, uh, the girl said, and I said this on stage. The next city, the girl said, uh, "Hey, hey, Chris Rock, brother, come take this picture." Mm. I said, "Damn, sweetheart, you know my name, Chris Rock, brother." <laughs> I said, "Oh shit, she didn't give a fuck," <laughs> and, and I literally was like in the picture, like. <laughs> And I know she took that shit. Like, look, I got one with Chris Rock, brother. I got Gary Owen. I got Mike. I'm like, she didn't give a fuck. Hey, hey, Catalyst Converter, Bolo brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I got your brother's video right here stealing some shit. That's why he never comes to shows. I don't want the parking lot to be empty. <laughs> yeah, you should call your brother. Hey, man, I'm doing uh, the arena. You could, you could clean yeah. up. <laughs> if I had his number. <laughs> You could clean up at the show, bro. We do it eighteen thousand. Yeah, great. You know what's gonna come out of this podcast? It'll be two hours long, and Lavelle's gonna call. Hey, man. Hey, what the fuck, man? <laughs> or, I don't think I ever or said Brian anything. Brian Alden will call. Like I never said, speak to Mike when you see him. I just yeah, said, yeah. nah. But I, I, honestly, I bet you it wasn't Mike. I bet you it was somebody with Mike that you walked by the hallway and didn't speak yeah. or something. It was something so minor. Yeah. But even like- But every with, interview, I always say, like whenever we do radio for that yeah. shit, particular city, I always say, shout out to Mike for having me on the tour because there's a million comics he could have picked. Yeah. And he said, yo, let me get rock. So that, I And that's why that. I, I give all props to Epps or any, any of these guys that headline those tours where you got five headliners yeah. on the show yeah. and they're all monsters. The middle is- the, when I first got with UTA and my manager really took a more invested interest in my career, and you were on those shows where it could be like D Ray Blackson, me, you, there's like six of us. And they literally come like, you know, we think you're, we think you should be headline. I said, don't you fucking dare. Don't you fucking dare. I go, put, it, put me, stand up's easy. Whoever makes the most goes last. Right. Whoever makes the least goes first, and it should trickle down if, like that's how it should trickle down. But you got those shows where it's like they call it co-headlining. But so you're no, getting the been same. A few, there've been a few cities that we did uh, last year and this year, beginning of this year, where it was like that debate of who wanted to headline. I don't, don't want to close. And I've always like Brian Alden knows. I always say to Brian like. Hey man, I'll go anyway. I don't oh yeah, care. you you was on and one. They you had, had to go me, last. They had me like on three of those shits. Where yeah. It was like 
six comics and nobody wanted to close. And then Brian goes, hey, I'll give you an extra, you know, a couple of thousand. Let's do it, Brian. And now I got to sit through heavyweight, heavyweight, heavyweight. That was last time I was say, people like this. We, we I was part enough. of that problem. I ain't gonna lie. It was one city. We went to Atlanta and they were like, Gary doesn't want to close. And I'm like, all right. No, no, no. Like, Quake doesn't want to close. That's not, okay. that's not, that's not the issue. The issue is, it's not not wanting to close. The issue is, I don't know why I did that. The issue was we had a price, the headline, and then we had a price, an Epps price, right? It's different. Right. So if I'm headlining, I the way we got negotiated is I get a percentage of the the ticket sales. Right. Right. If you headline. If I'm headlining. I mean sometimes Brian don't want to give me a set flat rate, mm -hmm. which is still great, but I'm like, that's not what we talked about. When we started the tour, granted, you're signing a 40 city deal. Right. So then they'll throw in this, hey, Atlanta, you're headlining. I said, I thought that was an Epps date. And they go, no, 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 Epps is doing this. You're headlining. I go, all right, well, so I'm doing percentage. Uh, no, we're going to do this. I go, well, I'm not going to headline for that. So it's not about not want to go last. Right. It's just like I'm sticking to the deal that we made. So you got to stand your ground, and so to see, speak. And see, the thing is, on my end, I'm always like, hey, man, I, like I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Like, okay, you want me to headline? I'll headline. I should be more like that. I should go, hey, if I'm headlining, I want this feat. Yeah, I'm, I can't do this for. I'm pretty much doing double time. You know, I'm, yeah, I was doing twenty here. Now you want me to do forty five for the same money? Yeah, or for three thousand more, two thousand mm -hmm. more? It's like, dude, I should get. Yeah, that's it. it but was, I'm all, like I said, I'm always like, oh, all right, I'm all yeah. okay. What is it? It's not. It, so this wasn't about Tony or anybody else that was on the show. Right. This was just like, hey, this is what we discussed. Right, right. No, I, I, I knew it wasn't personal, but I knew. They told me, like, this wasn't, you don't want to close. He doesn't want to close. But I like close. how he they put it on, Gary doesn't like, want a headline. All right, all right, I'm like this. That's not, that had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Gary is sticking to the deal right. that we signed. Right. right. You know? I should just probably renegotiate my deals when it comes to that. I would just say, hey, if I'm headlining, you got to you gotta pay the headline. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I was like And this. then it's like, it was one of those shows where it's like six people on the show. So by the time I get on, you see people like this, like... Guys talking to the girls like, mm, you want to go? But like, we've seen enough. We've seen but enough. that's why. It doesn't matter who's on the show. We've seen enough guys. I know. People don't get that. They'll be like, man, he was. I was like, the audience was tired. Yeah. And, that, and that's another reason why stick to my guns when it comes to going last when there's five comments. I go, dude, I'm fine, but you're going to pay me for that. Right. Hold on. You're going to pay for that suffering. You're going to pay <laughs> me for that guy talking to his girl. Mm -hmm. Like, because I realize those shows like that, they're not promoting it as the Gary Owen tour. They're promoting it as. You know the the you know the funny fuckers comedy right, right. tour the, coming to town the, and they're, people are paying the for the ensemble, your ass off. Yeah. right? So it's like you know I get it. it's not like it's a a, a a Chappelle tour, right? Where they're like they don't give a fuck. They're not the shows at eight. They're not coming till nine thirty because <laughs> they're they're coming to see Dave. You know what I mean? They're, those are the ensembles. That's I mean that's what that all was about. I I'm glad you're on the podcast to clear it because it's funny how Gary didn't want a headline. No, 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 no. No, they said that about everybody. It's like you didn't want to stick to the deal. It's, it's literally first I'll get an email like, "Hey, what do you think about closing in Atlanta?" Uh, I'd prefer not to. It's like six comics on the show. Then I get there like, a day before. I get the phone call like, "Brian, hey Tony, so uh, <laughs> so Quake and Gary don't want to close, and uh, I need you to close it." <sighs> Brian, come on, man. Yeah. Like they gave you some extra money, though, right? I, no, then I get to the venue. And it's Mark is like, hey, uh, comes with the envelope. Hey, Brian said, if you, uh, you got, all right, a couple thousand more. Yeah. Fuck it, let's do it. Then I got to sit through everybody on the show. I'm Sucks. there early. Yeah. I'm like, okay, now I'm just, freestyle session's been over. We already drank all your liquor. <laughs> 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 it's like, all right, I still got to just sit around and wait. And I feel like the audience feels. By the time you guys open, I'm like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, and I get on and they're I, like, "Hey, let's get out of here, man." But this is why I was uh, I was upset with Lavelle that night because I was like, "We, we know, all know how it is when you're going last right. on those shows, and if people start going long, they get tired, and now you got to It sucks. Right? It but sucks. The, the, the comic in me is like, you know what? The saving grace in all of this is the comic in me is like, well, fuck it. Let's see if I can follow all five of these motherfuckers. Right. Let's see if I can follow all six of these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's, 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 I tell my boys, like, let's go for it. Let's see, what, let's see what's... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's fuck it. Fellas, you got to test yourselves every day. Yeah. Fellas, like, let's go. I'm glad you feel that and way. my boys are like, yeah, son. And I get up <laughs> there and it's like, I see motherfuckers walking out. I'm like, okay, maybe maybe next city. Tony. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I did that. <laughs> I want you to test yourself, Tony. 
It had nothing to do with the money or the brine or nothing, man. I want to see. I want to see, see what the fuck Tony Rock's got. <laughs> iron shop is iron. <laughs> well, Wakanda forever. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I have but, you to thank, Gary. But I, I, I'm the guy. Here's I want to thank Gary Owen. Yeah. <laughs> for all those years. But that's why. Listen. You can set your watch to my sets when I go up yeah. in the middle you or early. I said that before. Dude, I'll be in the middle of a bit, and I'll look at the clock, and I'm like, it'll be like, it'll be like nine, eight, seven. I go, yeah. So I had this chick, right, bent over the bed. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> like this. What happened? You guys got to come back another time. I'm out of time. <laughs> I, my roommate Brad will be like, dude, you'll stop a bit in the middle of the bit to say goodnight. I go, but they always ask me back because That's there my- ain't nothing worse. Than that. And like, not the Harper LaBelle, but there's been other comics that have gone long before me too. And I'm right. like, why are they doing that? I get mad even if I'm not headlining. Right, I'm like, right. why are you doing that? Just when get you, off. Why are you doing that to the show? Yeah, it's... Yeah. it's, it's, it's it's very selfish, I, in my eyes. I'm like this. That's some selfish shit. Cause you, you, we've all been there. Right. Where you got to go last. So you know what that's like. So just the and, weight, hold on. Yeah. And if you're on a tour with like, once you're at a point where you're on a tour like we were on, I go. We've been doing this a long time. You know the difference between thirty and yeah, forty five. You, know how, it feels, right? you, know, you how it feels. know you've been up there a long time. Just, to me, it's almost like, and I know that's not what they're thinking. They're doing this. Man, fuck Gary. That's what I, mm-hmm. that's how I take it personally. Mm-hmm. I'm like this, because I told Brian after that happened in Montgomery, I go, dude, you gotta, you gotta talk to Lavelle, man. I go, he, I can't, I'm not doing any more of these dates if that's the case. And he goes, he goes, we talked to him. It's not gonna happen again. I said, all right, how about we just let's put it in writing, thousand dollars a minute. He goes, huh? I go, if I'm headlining, <laughs> if I'm going on at ten, and I'm going, and I don't go until ten fifteen, I get fifteen thousand dollars. I go, so why don't we do that? He goes, well, no, he, it's not going to happen again. I guess then you shouldn't be worried about right. not having to pay me any of that money. If you're guaranteeing you, right? me, nobody, and this is just about like anybody, nobody goes long, $1,000 a minute. He wouldn't do it. <laughs> I was like this. That's another reason I didn't yeah. headline Atlanta. Yeah. I was like this. I go, Brian, because you've been working with me 10 years. I go, I've never, I can honestly say I've never gone long, ever, especially when I'm going up early. I know what I know what it's like. Shit, to go I'm, I, I never go. I've gone short sometimes because I didn't want to go long. Oh, I love it when they come. I'm to going me. like, oh, okay, good night, and then get off. Like, yo, you had two minutes left. Like, I didn't want to burn the light. I didn't know. Yeah. I was like, fuck <laughs> it. I love it when they come to me like this. Hey, Gary, you're supposed to do thirty. You mind doing twenty? We're running a few minutes behind. Oh, yeah, I'm that. like this. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. problem. Yeah. Because then you you can just hit them real quick. Yeah, Mark, that's a Tyson fight. Mark comes to me a lot. Mark uh, Mark is the tour manager. Mark comes and he'll knock on the door like, hey, I know you're on for for twenty, but uh. I'm gonna need you to cut you to 15. I'm like, Mark, you come in here saying it like it's something bad. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't give a fuck. I no, get out hold of here. on, hold on. No, man, fuck that. I'm doing my five. <laughs> nope. They paid to well, see my, Twitter. My, my comedy mentor always told me, don't they give them what they pay you for. Like, I, I see a lot of people just go long for the sake of it. It's like, for what? You're not getting paid for it. Like, well, I mean, if you're at a comedy club and you're just fucking around with the audience mm-hmm. and you're the headliner, yeah, that. That's your right. Keep them wanting more. Keep them wanting more. You say goodnight. They, you want them to be like, damn, that's it. I, so when you come back, they come yeah. back to see you. But you still, in my eyes, is like, you got to give them, like at a comedy club, you got to give them a 90 minute show. I don't mm-hmm. care what that means. That means yeah. if you're doing 50 and your opener's doing 40, it's, it's got to come out the, yeah. that come out yeah. the 90. Yeah, yeah 50, 40. Yep. <laughs> I went like this. Yeah, my mask good. You got to give them a 90 minute show. On those big theater shows, they, like they don't care if you do 15, 10, they just want to see everybody go up at some point. Yep. I always tell guys that are in the business, like young comics that'll be at these comedy clubs, hey, Gary, what gotta do, man? They'll ask you the crazy guy. I go, uh, be on time and stick to your time. And you'll pretty much always work in this yeah. business. Yeah. Because when you come back to be a city. Be on time, stick to your time, don't steal jokes. Man. Don't steal jokes. <laughs> I tell motherfuckers, I try to say it you know, more diplomatic than I say, hey, be inspired by, but don't copy. Like everybody yeah. has a comic that they're inspired by, but mm-hmm. don't copy the motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I mean, hopefully they take from that. Don't steal jokes. They got and they got to realize like if you're if you're doing a joke that we if you heard that headliner's probably heard it right and you're like right oh. I know you know I tell young comics that a lot when I'm at the factory and I see like I'll, I'll sit and watch like open mic night and they'll do a bit that's so cliche I go bro you know you you know you heard that joke before yeah you know that you've heard the joke before so you think 
a comedy club owner or a manager does, hasn't heard that shit before? Like, yeah. you think that you're saying something to comedy fans that is so groundbreaking to that? Like, you know you heard that shit before. What are you doing? Yeah. It's, I, you know, it's funny. Like, when uh, did you watch Chappelle's 846? I loved it. Uh, when he said, it got a little deep, and he goes, I got some dick pussy jokes. <laughs> I'm like, yes, that's the best. Because I always say, like, I always keep my uh, dirty bits to the end. Of course. And then I'm like, that's the this. rule. You go blue last because you can't follow blue. Yeah. Because I'm like this. It's so funny because I'm like, um, when people be like, if you're struggling, all you gotta do is be like, who likes getting a dick sucked? I go, everybody, gay guys, straight guys, we all like getting our dick sucked. <laughs> Let's be you strap ons. They still suck the strap on dick. <laughs> For some reason, dick sucking is amazing. <laughs> I go, if that's the end all, you're bombing, just say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I appreciate, like, I don't really watch. I've always said this. I stopped watching stand up years ago. You did an interview somewhere and you said that. And I read it like he. Because I don't. I want to make sure my jokes are mine. Because you said you didn't watch any of my brother's specials, and I was like, really? And then he was like, and you said because you don't want to get their material in your head. Yeah, like, I read that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was. It's not a knock. Like people. It's funny how you say hey, they're like, "What do you think of Chris Rock special? What do you think of Dave Chappelle special?" I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. And then people twist it like he's hating. I go, no, you don't understand. I might watch a clip on YouTube, like somebody posts a three-minute clip. I go, but to sit and watch somebody's hour special, mm -hmm. I go, I don't want to because, two, well, there's a couple reasons. One, I hate I hate seeing a captive audience, a microphone on stage, because you want to be that guy. Right, right. And two, I always want to know my jokes are mine. No matter what, they're mine. Right. It could be similar, but I know. Perfect example, me and DL had the exact same joke. Exact. And it was one of those Brian Alden dates. DL was on, and it was when LeBron left Cleveland to go to Miami. And right. I said, God, I go, I don't know why people are shocked. I go, I've been to Miami. I've been to Cleveland. It's not a tough decision. Mm -hmm. It's like asking a guy who you want to fuck, Beyonce or Precious. Of course, I'm going to say Beyonce. Yo, I went up before DL, did that joke in Miami. He went up and having, did the- Having not seen- Not seen set. mine. Picked the same two females. Picked wow. Precious and Beyonce. Wow. But well, you got to realize, Precious just came out. Right. Beyonce's considered one of the most beautiful women Beyonce's in the world. Beyonce's Beyonce. Yeah. So it's like this. It made sense. And like we actually was out to dinner at Prime 112 after the show. And so we're eating. I just looked and I said, hey, DL, did you notice the audience go flat? Like about 15 minutes in. He goes, yeah, what the fuck? I go, uh, we got the exact same joke. And he goes, what? I go, Beyonce Precious. I go, when I saw you doing it, I go, oh, shit. And he, he just started laughing. At least he knows I'm not a joke thief. Right. Because he right. just started laughing. He goes, dang. I go, when you did it, I go, what are the fucking chances? <laughs> yeah. So we just laughed about it instead of being like, you stole my shit. I'm glad none of DL's people saw me. But that's the scenario where people would write the same joke. LeBron going from Miami to Cleveland. It's like Cleveland, Miami. Okay, people would... You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, like with the last debate with uh Kamala and uh and uh Mike Pence, mm -hmm. and she was looking. She he said something. She's like, uh, I'm speaking. I'm speaking. Yeah. I was about to write the joke, and I said, everybody's gonna have it. I was like, nah, fuck it. Everybody's gonna have it. Yeah. Everybody's gonna have the. Oh, he don't know how to argue with a sister. You gotta. You can't. It can't be your first time debating a sister on the. Like, nope. Everybody's gonna have it. I'm not even. Yeah. Doing it. If she wins, if if Biden and Harris win. You know, me and my wife, we got our hall passes, and hers has been Barack since he's been in office. Really? Yeah. And I. I and yours I, is the girl at Waffle no. House. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, now, nah, I told her, I said, if they win, um, let you know Harris is mine. And if I get a chance, it's going to happen. And she goes, huh? I go, that's power pussy. I, I got it. <laughs> I don't care. I go, I might record it and release that's it. Power pussy. <laughs> I go, that's power pussy. That's power I mean, pussy. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. Vice president. Yes. That'd be the best kept secret. Yes. <laughs> and I'd come that's back. Like, that's like the highest level pussy's ever reached. Oh it's my like, God. Hold on. It's like pussy going to the moon. It's like his pussy's never been this far. <laughs> to, uh, the, Tony, to the White I'll House. I'll come back and explain to my wife in detail how it was. <laughs> oh my God. She got a tattoo. <laughs> She's double jointed. I never knew. She did these things with the thumbs on my back. <laughs> All right, let's go deep, babe. <laughs> What'd you do today? And I expect the same honesty if she ever banged Barack. I'm like this. I'm not jealous. I'm like this. So how am I hanging? You'd be like, details. Is my dick bigger? <laughs> No, we're not getting divorced. Hell no. Details. Mm -mm. I want more. Tell me more about them. <laughs> <laughs> Did he come quick? Was he fast? What was it like? <laughs> That's just. But if you had a, if, okay, you're. If you had a hall pass, who would it be? Uh, Hallie. 
Hall, oh, Hallie's a good one too, man. Hallie. Hallie's a good one. I'm like this. But Harris Trump's no, her if she's up, vice fuck, president. If I, get, if, I get a, if I get a shot at Hallie, a hall pass or not, if I get a chance, I'm taking it. Yeah, that's true. There's some you got. There's some, there's Even some, without a hall pass, like, your girl got to go, I. There's some people out there, like, there, there's no doubt my wife would probably fuck Lenny Kravitz. If, if he's in a, if it, if it's, if it could happen, yeah. then I'd be like this. As a dude, I don't get guys that get jealous. I go, you got to realize... It's fucking Lenny Kravitz, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I'd be like this. Me, I'm different. I'd be like this. Oh, did you, you get a guitar sign or anything? Like, <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta get a gift out I of it, right? Something. Yeah, you gotta get something. Like, you ain't just gonna fuck him and not give me a souvenir. <laughs> he said, give you these shades. Yeah. <laughs> I got the original, uh, 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 what do you do? I belong to you, you belong to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, doing a, a, a radio interview the other day. It was something about people I meet. And I said, I don't like to meet celebrities. Every celebrity I've ever met has ruined my image of them. Most of them, like 99% of them have ruined how cool I thought they were. Yeah. I'm dead serious. So I get off the phone and my girl's like, like everybody? And I'm like, yeah, not a lot of people I met was like as cool as I thought they were. And that's why I don't like to meet celebrities. And she's like, I don't even know if it's like Michael Jackson's gone. I would love to meet him, but he's gone. Prince, I would love to meet. I don't know. I guess I'd like to meet... Uh, Denzel or Leonardo DiCaprio? And I'm like walking upstairs. I said, bitch thinks she's slick. She want to fuck Denzel yeah. Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio. <laughs> she don't, fuck Random. You wanna, fuck you want to meet right. D- yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. You want to fuck the... Yeah. You didn't say John C. O'Reilly. Yeah, I'm walking upstairs. I'm walking upstairs like, this bitch lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another one. How you going to be mad? Right. How right. you... That's what kills me when guys go like on these jealous rages or commit suicide or kills their girl... Cause whenever I hear stories like that, I go, what kind of uh, weak dick-minded yeah. man are yeah. you? Yeah. Well, fucking dude, you keep it moving, man. Even Not when even... dudes want to fight other dudes over a girl. Like, I don't dude, get that at it's all. Like, it's like, hold up. So you don't acknowledge that your girl's fine and other men find her attractive also? Right. So you want to fight a guy for agreeing with you that your girl is good looking? Yeah. Or usually those jealous dudes, they're fighting themselves. Right. They probably got more skeletons than anybody else. Yeah. I go, yeah. you yeah. fighting yourself, dude. Yeah. So you hold on. You're just the... Uber perfect man that you don't yeah. do anything wrong. Yeah. Okay, now you want to yeah. fight this other dude. I was in Liberty, Liberty Township. The uh, yeah, the Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. That's, and my, that's my city, man. I did the show that Thursday? Met some girl at the after the show. Cincinnati girl, take care of you. I had a <laughs> yeah, they take care of me. They take care of me. I had a uh, who did I have with me? I had one of my boys. One of my one of, one of my you know all my openers are uh, my homies, my comedy homies. I forgot who was with me, but we met these two girls. And remember the hotel was right across the street. The AC. There. Yeah. We walk right over to the hotel. We get we go to the lounge, have some drinks, and Shorty starts telling me how she can cook and all this, and she's in it. And her girl's like, "Oh, she could cook. Oh my goodness, she make French toast and this and that." And she's like, "I'll bring you breakfast in the morning if you want me to." And I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "What do you want?" I'm like, "Turkey bacon, some grits, you know, whatever, you know, some." I I I got you. And I'm like, "I gotta get up in the morning and do radio." And she's like, "You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go home now and bring the food back." And this is like nice two, maybe two, maybe maybe one, because it was one show that night. And she goes home, comes back, and I call other, the other comic. I forgot who it was. Like, yo, come to the room. And she's, it's all this food, and we in there eating. And I crash out for a little bit. I don't fuck. I crash out for maybe two hours, jump up and go do radio. That afternoon, on my Twitter, some dude, yo, Tony Rock, big fan, man. I don't respond. I never respond to it. Positive or negative on social yeah, media, I don't respond. You can't. To yo, big fan, bro. Yo, uh, real talk. You, you beat last night? And I'm like, oh, this, this is on is Twitter? Twitter. Oh, and like a person, a DM message. Okay. Yo, big fan, bro. Love your work. Yo, real talk. Did you did you smash last night? And I'm like, oh, what? this is her dude. This is that Because ch- how would he know this this fast? Yeah. Like, this is, I'm not touching this. I'm not touching this. I'm like, no response from me. Oh, my like, God. But I didn't touch it. But it was like. So what? That's so it weird. Was like he was, and I'm like, he's in his head. He's, he's done now. Because to not get a response. He's gonna create a story in his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your questions have to be answered, whether they're answered by the person you want to answer from or not. Yeah. So if you don't get an answer from the person, you're gonna answer them yourself. And in your yeah. head, you will concoct a way worse scenario every time. You should have just responded, Tony. I'm gay. Keep that between <laughs> us, though, homie. <laughs> hey, homie, keep that between us. Hey, man, don't I'm tell nobody. Gay, right? And uh, Chris is not my brother, that's my lover. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> We're married. <laughs> They're gonna do a black broke back. 
That's with how, me and Chris. That's how I got the last name. We're married. <laughs> <laughs> My real last name is Washington, but they call me Tony <laughs> Rock. <laughs> Well, I'm glad. I'm glad to see the ladies in my city are cooking. Oh man, they throwing take care down. Of me. Cleveland, Cincinnati. Know what? I, know what they take care of me the most? Columbus. Columbus, huh? Oh man, I can't buy. I can't buy a sandwich in Columbus. I can't pay for a drink in Columbus. Makes you feel good about my state, man. Yeah, man. See, I'm not a jealous dude. I'm like this. <laughs> Where'd you go, how girls? <laughs> they took that. They took that OH and flipped it around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait! Oh! oh. <laughs> Why do you think? Hold on. Why do you think so many guys go to Ohio State? I, no, and I know. Stay in Columbus. I, look, I was there one year, and I, I was in. Uh, damn, what's the name of the spot? It was the spot everybody goes to after the show. The the little. In Columbus? Yeah, the little Is that Mexican the, spot upstairs. Upstairs. What the is it called? Cafe Iguanas or some shit yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm in there, and it's this chicken there, this fucking drop dead gorgeous. Like everybody's like, yo, I'm like, who is this magical motherfucker right here? And they're like, oh, that's uh what was the quarterback at the time? Of Ohio State? Yeah. He he didn't he, he Braxton Miller? They're like, yo, that's Braxton Miller. You, you gotta be fucking shit, man. I just threw that name out. Yes, that's what it was. That's what it was. Short light skin dude. No, no, Braxton wasn't short light skin. Uh what year was this? No, it was Braxton. He, what does he look like? I mean, he's not super tall. Right. But he's probably 5'11". Right. I'm 5'11". Yeah. Oh, okay. So You say short. For, for, quarterback, for quarterback. Yeah, yeah, you're right, right. And he's like curly hair. Yeah, Braxton yeah. Miller. He's like, that's Braxton Miller's girlfriend. I'm like, yeah, that looks like Braxton Miller's girlfriend. <laughs> that should be Braxton Miller. You're a, you're a freaking... You he's the realize. starting quarterback at OH. Oh, that, come on OHU, now. That should be his girlfriend right there. Well, you know, it's funny. Like, my, um, my daughter, who's at North Carolina a t now... She went to homecoming with this guy that's offensive lineman out of Ohio State. Right. And she went to OSU or she No, went? no, she went they in high school. So, okay, okay. They've known each other since kindergarten. And then he was gonna fly out this year to take her to prom in California, but then COVID hit. Mm. So they're they're friends, but there could it could be like some love and basketball shit. But she's so funny. <laughs> I'll uh, play you for your heart. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you ever hear Naeem's joke about that? No. Naeem's like he was breaking up with this girl. She tried to play him on some love and basketball shit. Oh, yeah. I'll play you for your heart. Man, I beat the shit out of that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm going to use that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shout out Naeem. <laughs> uh, see, that's why I don't want stand-up. That was a good yeah. joke. I'd be mad like this. <laughs> fuck Naeem. He said, man, I beat the shit out of that bitch. Man, fuck Naeem and that good-ass <laughs> clever joke he wrote. Funnier than anything, I got my hour right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like now that he's at Ohio State, I, I even I like we were have blunt conversations with my daughter and everybody. I'm like, uh, she always played off like, no, I don't, I don't like him like that. I'd be like this. All right, I'm just letting you know, he's at Ohio State. Yeah, he you got you got to let him live. He running through him. Look, yeah, you yeah. got to let him live. If he it's meant to be, him. it'll come back. Because her friends always be like this. Her friends in high school was funny. They'd be like, uh, you gonna be mad? If you, you stop pushing Paris away, they go, and then he goes to the NFL. She was like, my dad's got money. That shit don't impress me. Ah. I go, there you go, baby girl. <laughs> but hold on, deep down, I hope they did. Because that guy's going to the league. Yeah, that kid is going to the league. He's a lot. Oh, his, name, his name is uh, Paris Johnson. Paris Johnson. At Ohio. He's a tackle. Okay. Dude, when Dude. I tell you he played on my son's T-ball team, basketball, all grown up, sucked at every – T-ball? He couldn't hit the ball to tee. This is like, well, so what, uh, they're 19 now, so this is 12 years ago. Yeah. His mom would sit in the stands at those tee ball games. He'd go, my, my baby played football. My baby played football. And I'm, I remember telling my wife going, Monica don't know what the fuck she's talking about. PJ can't do shit right. He can't play basketball. He can't play tee ball. He can't hit the ball to fucking tee. He going to play football. That motherfucker. Hey, man. <laughs> Yo, he, he grew. It. How did she know he was going to grow like that? He was, last year, he was the number well, she one. Well, knew his dad. I, he, yeah. He was the number one tackle in the nation. Not the state. The, the nation. Wow. PJ he, what? Uh, Paris Johnson. Paris Johnson. PJ okay. Johnson. Okay. He's 77 on Ohio State, which is, uh, you know, at Ohio State, that's a big number for a lineman to get. Okay. He's, he's going to play as a freshman. He's so big now. And moves like you can look him up on YouTube. Yeah. Paris Johnson's high. It's it's a man amongst boys, and he's playing against. When you see his highlight, high school highlight reel, it's kind of like seeing LeBron. You know, you didn't realize he was playing against yeah, Carmelo yeah, yeah, in high school. Yeah. He was making everybody look stupid. That's how PJ. Is. You don't realize the guy he just threw down like a rag doll is going to Michigan State. Wow. The guy, you know, you're like wow. this. Good for oh, him. Look at that little guy. Good for him. But I'm I'm like this deep down. I'm like this. 
I wouldn't mind it if they stayed together. <laughs> <laughs> but, he got, like, but he has to live right now. You gotta oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a guy, though. You can't be 18, 19 in Ohio at Ohio State. That's and all, you're the dude. But that's really all guys. All men. Like, you get a TV show. Like, you got to let that dude live. I always you say this. You start Listen, going on tour. You got to let him live. I, I'm, you, you be dumb. You're, you're, it bothers me when guys in the NBA get caught up and they're in their 20s. You know, you slow down when you... 30s, 40s, you slow down a little bit. Guys in their 20s, multi-millionaires, NBA, NFL, whatever, and then they have a girlfriend, and then some minor scandal comes up that he was cheating, mm-hmm. and they act like he ain't shit. Right. I go, no, no, I'm, I'm more offended you think your pussy is that amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you have the magical <laughs> pussy. Hey, Halle Berry got cheated on. Case closed. I'm like this. Case Dude, closed. you can't. Data coach. How about that? And he was, that kid was, what, Pop Warner. All he did was school and football. Yeah. High school was practice after school. Had to study for tests. College had to stu- pass t- classes or he was off the team. Then he goes, gets drafted to the NFL or the NBA. He didn't live the whole time. Now he gets all the shitload of money. It's like, you got to let him live. And hey, hold on. Not only a shitload of money, but he, he doesn't have to work for it. Right. They let me tell you. You go to Green Bay. They know who you are. You're the only thing in town, bro. Especially if you're black. Man. They know. They, dude. What are you doing here? I was in. <laughs> I was in. I was in uh, Iowa one time. True story. On the plane landing in Iowa and getting my bags from baggage claim, and some guy was like, "So what time's the show?" And I'm like, "This town is so white. This motherfucker knew I was entertainment. <laughs> he, he knew this motherfucker's coming in to entertain us." He's not from here. <laughs> He's definitely not from Des Moines. What time's the show? I'm like, uh, eight. Tonight. Is it white dude said it? Yeah, eight tonight, eight and ten tomorrow. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm there. And I'm like, and I said it on stage tonight. Like, motherfucker knew that I was entertainment. Yeah. That's how yeah. white this shit was. Well, is what it is. I'm just saying, like those it. ball players. God, I hate it when the media portrays them like that. Like he ain't shit. I go, no, no, no. Grand Hill's not normal. You realize, John Stockton, that's not normal. I don't like when the media portrays any guy like that to an extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, Politician, you're right. I'm like, yo, why do you think he got into politics? Like, exactly. It's a power position to be, yeah. anytime you're in a position of power, women are attracted to that. Women are attracted to power. Men so are attracted. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bang this dude. Vice President Harris. Was like, hey, I got this power <laughs> and these chicks are attracted and I never got this attention before. Yeah. I'm a man. I slipped up, you know. And it, well, it's also like. Um, not condoning it, not saying, you know. But no, no, like not either. I mean, you, you get older, you slow down. Right. But you get older and you understand it, too. Yeah. But it's like, um, like think about stand-up. You know, you first get into stand-up. We're, op- we're open mic in L.A. I got attention I never got before. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I'm like this. Like, my first year in L.A., I lived, bro. Like, I lived. <laughs> I my wife knew face. it. I was like this. I can see it in your face. My wife literally, when we when we decided we're gonna be together, she was like, um, anytime a girl would say, "Hey, Gary, what's up?" She made it a point to make eye contact. Be, like, "How you doing?" I'm Kenya. <laughs> I go, "What was that?" There was one girl that I told her about that I guess had an industry rep, like she was an industry hoe, right? Okay. So several, several, I never. Girls on that list. I never. I messed around but we didn't sleep together and then i told kenya you know hey and she was like kenya was like oh yeah i heard about her i know about her wow we're out to eat the girl comes up and was polite as shit like hey gary <laughs> kenya fucking made sure she knew bitch if you thought those days are over Just, wow. <laughs> the way wow. she spoke to her was like polite but like look you had your chance yeah but now that's over because i was like come on like what was that you know what i do with my girl that like like you said you lived when you came out here i Lived a long time, like a long time when I was out here. And uh, now with my girl, I'll just say, like, we'll be somewhere and I'll just say, hey, uh, it's a few girls in here that I have history with. And she's like, okay, like, you let me know. Cool. And yeah. then the months they start coming over, hey, Tom, what's up? What you, what you been up to, Mr. Yeah. Man? Hey, yeah, good to see you. <laughs> and she's like, that's one of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, got <laughs> we got history. But I always tell her, like, I'm not going to have you out. In public, looking stupid. I'm not yeah, that's have, that's what you're not that's gonna worse. be a joke. You're not gonna be some. It ain't gonna be some girls in the corner like this bitch. Like she, she already know. Yeah. I already told her. You yeah, know what I'm I was more the kiss and bandit when I first got to L.A. I just if I saw you was good, you was on one episode of a different world. I wanted to kiss you. I was like, 
Dude, my tongue was in so many sisters' mouths. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was content. <laughs> All right, nice meeting you. My tongue was in more black girls' mouths than Tic Tacs. <laughs> I fresh, look, I fresh kissed the entire sorority. <laughs> My tongue was in more black girls' mouths than a gold tooth. It's a different world from where you come from. I took that literally. Like, I came from a trailer park in Ohio. I go, it is a different world than where I came from. <laughs> they were talking to me. Yo, I, I knew I had to stop when I kissed some girl, and she was on Homeboys in Outer Space. And I went... Hmm. Yeah, you, I gotta, I gotta yeah, up my you, standards. You didn't have to kiss her. You I gotta up my standards. Yeah, you didn't have to kiss her. <laughs> she was a waitress <laughs> <laughs> in homeboys in outer space. <laughs> so uh, I asked this to all my guests: if the, the one person, actor or director, you haven't worked with, so they're like Tony Rock, this is your movie. Who do you want to be a co-star? You want to be a co-star with that you haven't worked with? You want to work with? Sheesh, because you worked a lot. I gotta say, Denzel. Denzel seems to be the one. Do something dramatic with Denzel where we both like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, damn, them motherfuckers acting. I'm gonna Would you, like that. my thing with Denzel. Like, is, I want to do, uh, what was the movie? You Can't Handle the Truth. Like, Oh, like A Few Good Men. Like something like that with me and Denzel. I'm Tom Cruise. He's Jack Nicholson. Like, yeah. Some drama, dramatic shit that would, fucks everybody up. Would you be a little nervous? I would. At least my first day on set with Denzel, like, I don't want to fuck up my lines. I don't want to yeah, fuck I'd up my Yeah, I'd probably be like a little nervous. Yeah. <sighs> Because I'm, I'm in his forum. If it was stand up, I'd feel really good about yeah. it. You know, comedy. Me crushing him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he had to follow, if it was like he had to go, up, I'm like, I'm going to destroy this dude. Let me, let me tell you, if I had to do a dramatic scene with Denzel or a dramatic movie with him, first day on set, I'd be like, uh, make sure makeup's close because I'm, I'm going to need dabbed after every <laughs> time. <laughs> I'd be sweating like this. Well, that was good. That was good. Okay. Woo. And he'll probably be so, co so cool about it. He's like, He's he's been doing this so long. He probably just be like, "Hey, Gary, uh, let's let's do this. Yeah, let's, uh, just relax, man. You're right, doing okay, good. Okay, you okay, 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 okay." <laughs> I'd be like this. Did you just say okay, 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 okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Let's 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 do another one. Let's get another. I'd one. have to know his. I probably know the entire script inside and out. That's how I was, when I was when I was on the sitcom that Will produced. Script backwards, forwards, which, inside. Which, I, I was on all of us. All of us. I can't remember. And that was the Lisa Will, Ray one, right? Yeah, Will was EP. Will it was about his life. He, him and Jada were executive producers. I had the script, first page, last page, inside out, what, backwards, upside down. That was, was that UPN? That was UPN. It was UPN, then they merged and became the CW. Yeah. So we did two seasons as the UPN and then two more seasons on CW. That was the, that was the show, all of us, where I'll never forget. Um, I think, uh, obviously MTV had Cribs, but then didn't BT had like How You Living? How I'm Living, yeah. How I'm Living? Yeah. And I'll never forget... Uh, Lisa Ray was on the show, and then she did How I'm Living before she got on the show, right? Okay. So everybody thought, everybody thinks you get in a movie, you're a multimillionaire. That's right. not the case. Right, right. So, you know, she did Players Club. Movies make you famous, did. TV make you rich. Facts. So then she, her place was cool, it was great. But then she came back, like two years later, after she'd been on All of Us for a couple seasons, and I was like... Oh yeah, that, that's that sitcom money right yeah, there. Like yeah, she upgraded, yeah, yeah. Lisa Ray upgraded majorly. <laughs> <laughs> now you see how I'm living. My yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you did you guys get a hundred episodes out of that? We got four seasons, eighty eight. Oh, 88. You, did you get syndicated? syndicated eighty eight. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the house. I be in the house right now. Check. I'm like, oh shit. Isn't that the best? <laughs> I look around like, what the fuck? How about like I did I did like one season of House of Pain, so I'll get those residual checks. But then I'll be thinking like. I wonder how many Lance Gross has right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be thinking like, I got, I just got 10, because they come at the same time. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they're all about the same amount, yep, 50 bucks, yep, 60 yep. bucks, something like that. And then I'll be thinking, God, Lance did like 200 episodes. And his, his residuals are probably a little more than mine. I was like this, yeah. yeah. Lance, I said, it was a good day to be Lance Gross today. Yeah. When we did, we did, come we did in the four mail. seasons of All of Us. Then I did a season of, uh, what's the what was the show that, that uh, Tracy Ellis Ross was on with, Malcolm Jamal Turner and then she Malcolm Jamal Warner and then she left to do Blackish. I don't even know. It was, it was she. They played husband and wife on. It was on BET. I don't even. Can it we look that good, up? It was. It was a good sitcom and then she left to do Blackish. Tracy Ellis Ross, Malcolm Jamal Warner. Could they have an all white staff or they would have rattled off and said, "Oh yeah, it's called Johnny and Jen." <laughs> Read between the lines. Read between the lines. Yeah. So I did a season of that. I did four seasons of All of Us, one season of Read Between the Lines, half a season of Living Biblically. Uh, two seasons of Apollo, one season of all deaf comedy. Oh, uh, deaf, yeah. Yeah, so, been working, man. Yeah, you've been working. Trying to stay busy. 
That's why you headlined Atlanta. I knew that. <laughs> like, this, is, this is his market. Hold on. I was like this. Nah, that motherfucker got ACs in the sitcoms. He going to headline Atlanta. <laughs> I had a reality show on BET. Atlanta, they call me old boy. Yeah, that's old yeah. boy from us. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do, I, do a, I do a joke of how black people will stop you even if they don't know your name. I said, then they, the, the classic black line is this. Oh, he act like he ain't him. <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> this motherfucker walk around Linux like he ain't him. I don't know what that means exactly. <laughs> no, you know what? I get I get uh, a lot. Of, this is all the time. I'll get like I'm walking through Linux or walking around somewhere in Atlanta or Detroit or whatever. And you just walking around by yourself like that, man. Right. And, and I always say, you don't see God walking with me. And they always, look, and they always go. They always go. I know that's right, brother. Yeah. They, they kind of leave me alone when I say, yeah. I know that's right, brother. Go yeah. ahead, brother. Have a good day. I'm like, God works every time. God works every time. You don't see the girls, Lord. Like, girls, like, you just walking around me? the street like that? You don't see God walking with me, sweetheart? Yeah. I know that's right. I, you walk, baby. They then, always act like, like half a block. They're like, shit, I forgot to get a picture. Yeah. <laughs> they always act like we're supposed to have some huge entourage or something. Be Starbucks at 8 in the morning. Yeah. You by yourself? Yeah. Like what? What do you mean? I'm just getting coffee. I'm supposed to wake. I'm supposed to wake. I'm supposed to wake five niggas up. Like yo, let's go get. Yeah. Or they do this. Or they, hey man, I ain't trying to blow your spot up. But I know you are. Yeah, <laughs> like this. Yeah. He, or they're loud. Hey man, I ain't trying to blow your spot up. I go. You just did. I was. On you a completely blew my spot up. I was. On a, this was a good one. I was on a plane one time. I get on. I'm going to L.A. to Atlanta. I'm flying first class. I sit down, window seat. Very pretty older black woman sits next to me. Looks at me, she looks again, she goes, how is it? And I go, uh, it's, it's cool. And she goes, no, like, how, how, is, how is it all? Tell me, tell me how, it's, <laughs> how, it, how it is. I go, what do you imagine it to be? She says, I just imagine it's amazing. It's just so much fun. I said, it's even better than you imagine. She said, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and then she just sat there like, I'm not going to bother you. And I just flew. And I'm like. So you didn't, you didn't fuck her in the bathroom? Nope. She was just like, Hi. she was like, my life. Like, I'm like, it's better than you think. She's just like, oh my God. Story sucks. <laughs> You're supposed to be like, so how is it? It's fun because it's we meet random girls imagine. on planes and we fuck in the bathroom. <laughs> and you're like this. So what's up? <laughs> I knew it. She was like, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what was with that PGS story, Tony? I thought that was about to take you a was going somewhere. You're yeah. like, oh, here it's we go. better than I imagined. I was like this. I should have fucking stopped this podcast nah, 15 she, minutes she ago. Wasn't, she wasn't, it wasn't like I should fuck this lady. Yeah. If it was one of those I should fuck this ladies, I would have took it somewhere else. Yeah. Like, oh, older than a nice lady? Okay. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is it? <laughs> I've had it's funny when uh, I flew Frontier one time uh, I, my flight got I missed my flight to Vegas and my show was that night the only so you era, had to, yeah no, you, I knew there was a story behind it because you don't just fly Frontier no, you like, don't. I missed my first class missed, flight on yeah. Delta had to fly Frontier yeah went, okay. and then I was like the only, only I'm sitting there at the Cincinnati airport like god damn it I can't miss the show how am I going to get there Frontier had a direct I was like cool I had never flown Frontier. I didn't know they charge you for every. Yeah. You say, you say hello. It's five dollars. Hi, welcome, welcome on board. Thank you, five dollars. You you responded. <laughs> the black flight attendant was on there. She goes, she saw me and she went like this, and I go, fuck, because there's no first on Frontier. Right. So I go to the back. She moves her bags to the overhead bin because the last row is the flight attendant's row. So she sat me down there, and then she gave me this biggest bottle of water ever seen in my life <laughs> and like this big box of M&Ms and I go, what are you doing? She goes, I, I don't want you talking bad about our airline. She goes, so I'm going to make sure nobody sits next to you and because the flight was packed. Right. Nobody in that back row. I had all three seats nice. and she kept feeding me water and snacks and stuff. I go, I don't know. She goes, I just don't want you talking bad about our airline. <laughs> it's like this. All right. But I had never flown Frontier <laughs> and then I see her going on the cart going, uh, $8. $12, $8, <laughs> charge your mail for snacks and drink. A napkin, home. that'll be $2. She really took care of me. Yeah. <laughs> I, get that, I get that a lot. I get like, uh, they'll give me the ba the, a bag of uh, the little bottles of liquor. Mm -hmm. A lot of times. like they'll Before see, COVID. Before COVID, yeah. So it'll be like, they'll say, <gasps> like you'll see the girl recognize you. <gasps> One second. And she'll come with like a bag, like, here you go. And it's like 10 bottles of little liquor. And you're like, oh shit, here we go. Turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get up the plane like, yo, thank you, shorty. This shit was real. <laughs> you yo, drink you, on the plane? You the truth. Yeah. I can't drink on the plane. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think I've ever drank on the plane. Every time, as soon as I get on it, something to drink, mimosa, please. And oh. every time I do that, it's always somebody else go, you know what? I'll have a mimosa, too. I'm like, yeah, you got a mimosa, <laughs> oh, man. You know what's funny? I'll do this, and I, it'll, it'll tell me 
the person's personality sitting next to me. Because the, the flights are going, can I get you anything? I go, yeah, can I get a um, can I get an oat milk latte with just a little vanilla syrup? Uh, and can you ice it? And they'll be like, what? I go, oh. <laughs> the other airline had that. You don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the person, either the person next to me will laugh, yeah. or they'll just look at me like, if they look at me like this, I'm like this. Oh, it's one of these motherfuckers. But it usually it opens the person up next to me. Yeah, like, yeah. That's a good one. And then they'll, they'll try to top it. You know what I mean? Say some weird With, shit. Let me get this, this, and this. I'm like this. Oh, you just topped my joke. Yeah. All right, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, man. Well, I don't want to keep you too much longer. So you're at Helium and Indy this Helium, weekend. Helium, Indianapolis, Indiana. Two shows Friday yeah. the 16th. Two shows Saturday, Saturday the 17th. One show Sunday the 18th. Who the Steelers back got in this LA. Week? Steelers got uh, Cleveland this week. That's gonna be a good one. And I don't know when the makeup date is for the Tennessee game. I just don't want them to play. COVID, so I don't to... want. I don't want Burrow to play against the Bengals. Uh, the Steelers. Just sit them out. Who you guys got this week? Uh, Bengals got Indy. We got Indy. Oh, that's a loss. Indy got the number one defense. They didn't look that way against Cleveland. That's true. Yeah. That is true. We got the worst. So offensive coming off line. a loss, they're gonna really be playing. So yeah, that's, oh, okay, that's an L for you guys. Thanks. Appreciate playing that. in Cleveland or. I mean, in a. It doesn't Bay? matter. It's a bus trip, but I'm thinking it's an indie. That's right. That's right. That's so close. That's right. It's an hour and a half. Damn, drive. I could actually go to that game. The Bengals are in indie when you're in indie. Why am I saying excited like I'm there? <laughs> 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 oh my God, Tony! Can, you could probably give me call the coach. If I cared about either team, <laughs> <laughs> I could probably see that. But you want me to call the head coach? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they get a shot. Hey, is that Tony Rock there? I'm just sitting there like. <laughs> Hold on. You're on your phone watching the Steeler game. <laughs> I've done that before. I've been to games. I went to a Arizona uh, Texans game, and you know that, that doesn't start till four o'clock East Coast right, time, right. one o'clock West Coast. So the Bengals is playing the Ravens, and AJ Green caught the ball to go to overtime. Middle of the national anthem, I go like it was like out of one of those commercials. I go, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and the sky looks around, and goes, hey man. Show some respect. <laughs> I was like this. Oh shit! Sorry. Put my hand. This is before Kaepernick and everybody <laughs> stepped right, right, anthem. Right, right. Literally, when I say it was so quiet, and it wasn't my singing as it was like a flute or something, <laughs> and I just go. It wasn't even a crescendo of the song that oh, you could play at all. Tony, this old <laughs> white dude. Yes. Hey man. Show some respect. I was like this. Oh my god. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm sitting here when I had to say. Nobody <laughs> share my excitement with. I'm looking around, looking for anybody to high five. I'm like this. Yes. Everybody's like this. <sighs> it took him into overtime. They lost in overtime, yeah. but he caught this Hail Mary with no time like in 2013 or something. Oh my God. The Steeler game. Okay, before you get out of here. AJ Green, man, I know his his he's just gonna he's gonna retire one day and just be like my whole career, I could have just They're about to trade him. I could have been somewhere else really living, like really having a He's quiet though. He, he's like, I could have been a contender. No, nah, he's he's one of those guys though. You got those guys that are in love with the fame and not the game. He loves the game. Okay. Of course, he loves the money and perks. Right, right, right. But he's one of those guys. I don't. I don't need to be out. I don't need okay, all this good shit. For him. Good for he's him. he's one of the anomalies. I. It's him and his wife. He's like uh, Palomalo. Right, like Troy. I'm not, look, we gave a bad rep to athletes. I don't want people ripping us. We're just saying, you give a kid that never had nothing. Wait, million, we, was, we gave a bad rep to athletes. I'm saying, you don't want people coming on going, hey, not all of these be fucking around and shit. You're right. Not all of them do. But if we're going 60, 70%, let's go that route. 50%. Fuck around? Not fuck around. I'm just talking, well, I'm talking about if you 90 are. 90% fuck around. Listen, if you're a girlfriend, I'm like this. If you're, if you're a girlfriend. And I your think... boyfriend's 22 years old right. and just got millions of dollars. And he's in a city where the right. football is king, which is just about every major city. It's mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm more mad that you think your puss is that amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this. We never go that route. <laughs> Wait, did you just clear it up for what you said earlier? Was that, was that clearing it up? No, I'm not <laughs> clearing up. I'm just saying, like, AJ is a, he's one of those guys, like, we would say, like, it, it does happen. I think him and his yeah, girl, yeah, they just, yeah, they're, yeah, just, yeah. they're just living. They don't need all the extra shit. You know what I mean? Like Palomalu, Palomalu. Palo Malu. Yeah. He would get an interception, go to the sideline, take his glove off, and right. do this to the camera. Yeah. Like point to like, that was for you, babe. Yeah. You What's know what up? that means? His wife got that good shit. Kudos to him. Boom. Kudos. That's what that means. <laughs> hey, babe. Hey, babe. <laughs> we never say that, though, when like there's a 
athlete, and da 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 da, and they're like, yeah, yeah. You never we see never Earl, be like, you never see Earl Thomas goes, <laughs> <laughs> he got both hands up. <laughs> Look, he's, he's, he's doing, he's he's doing spare fingers. fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl's like this, I'm his pinky. He told me I'm the pinky. I'm the pinky. <laughs> He, you said, a thumb, when, he huh? said when he do his thumb, thumb like huh? this, that's for me. <laughs> that's my anal. That's, what, that's when we do anal. He did that for me because I do anal with him. You get an interception going. <laughs> Hold on. He's taking off his cleat. <laughs> How many holes does he have? <laughs> I don't know. What, oh, I was going to talk about. We got sidetracked again. Go. No, but when he was in Pittsburgh, that's the only time I literally... I thought I was going to get my ass kicked at a Steeler game. The Bengals are playing the Steelers. Right. And this is 2005. And Tab Perry returned the kickoff to give the, Steelers, the Bengals the lead. And I'm, whenever <laughs> I go to visiting, I like going to visiting um, stadiums and being a Bengals fan. Because one, nobody takes me serious. Right. They don't think like, right. they're saying like Cowboys and Giants, they take it serious. So I'm always conscious not to put the other team down. Just root for my team, right? That motherfucker returned that kickoff, and I stood up. Yeah! And my guy that's with me doesn't stand up with me. So I'm solo amongst all these Steeler fans, and I've been rooting for the Bengals the whole game. It was right. a great game. Uh, this guy about three rows back goes, Hey, man, you stand up one more time, we're going to have a problem. And I looked wow. around, and I went, I went, I just got back from my rack. I got a short haircut. I was like this. I just want to go to Bengals game. I can't help it. They're in Pittsburgh. He goes, I'm sorry, with the same <laughs> anger. <laughs> it was the same intensity. I was like this. That was the most intense I'm sorry. <laughs> and I sat down, and my buddy goes, man, that was quick. I go, motherfucker, I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. People we get out of fights. People started walking past. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Oh, you. I was getting beer sent to me. Thank you for your like service. Like that Iron City beer? Yeah. I don't, I don't really drink beer. I had like eight of them. Like, but people were really doing that. service, yeah. Hey, hey man, appreciate it. Sorry about the asshole, man. Yeah, wow, you know? good You know what I mean? Man. I mean, I literally, the funny bit was the intensity. He never changed his demeanor. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry! <laughs> <laughs> the best was the, everyone was about to pop. You could feel the 50 people he around me. He was about me. to set everybody else off. Yeah, yeah, it was about to go down. So I, dude, when I said it, like, so just, <sighs> I just got back from my rack. I can't help but to play here. I just want to see him play. <laughs> I'm defending your freedom to cuss me out. Okay? I, I fought for your life. Like, I got a heavy coat on. I'm missing an arm. <laughs> this is in my arm. Because I got it in my pocket. You think I like this shit, man? I Fuck. can't even clap. My 2nd <laughs> Battalion 3rd Recon Commander was a Steeler fan. When we were in the foxhole, the <laughs> Fenny show, we used to talk Steeler Bingo football, man. I cherish those fucking memories. Don't ruin it. <laughs> guys like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> that intensity, I'll never forget it. <laughs> the point got me, though. <sighs> All right, man. Yeah, so if there's no COVID, I would go to the game this weekend, but nope. Don't worry about it. Well, you're not going to watch anyways. going to watch the Steelers and Browns at the same time. This is, this is true. This is what it is. All right. Well, enjoy your fucking season. Thank you so much. Uh, Super Bowl bound. I will see you there. Hopefully, COVID clears up by then, and we can uh, attend some football games. I'm, I, at least, at least, Ohio women repped Ohio. Oh yeah, yeah. Better than Pittsburgh women, no, right? Oh well, no, no. Pittsburgh, okay. Pittsburgh, Sorry about they that. Get, Tony. Take it down too. Pittsburgh All right. is down too. Well, Tony's just shout out to the women <laughs> of Pittsburgh. Jesus Christ, Tony. You, you know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. Yeah. We know who they are, too. You banged half the Steelers, didn't you? And then, and then you got ran through, and Tony came in town. You're like, fuck it, I'm going to move on to comedians. You they prob- you com- prob- comedians would treat me right. Yeah. You probably <laughs> fucked Wiz Khalifa, too, didn't you? Probably his road manager. You sorry-ass motherfucking. Hold on. You sorry-ass Super Bowl winning team. With structure, knowing how to treat your fan, Great motherfuckers. Farm system. Knowing how to scout talent. The most recognizable piece of fan paraphernalia in the world. Yeah, you got Snoop, we got Nick Lachey. Same, same level of musical artist. <laughs> you got Wiz Khalifa, you guys got... We got the Isley Brothers. I don't know if they're fans, <laughs> but they're from Cincy. Okay. Uh, 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 Sly and the Family Stone, right? Bootsy Collins. Bootsy Collins. 
Yeah. Hold on, Cat Williams. We got Cat. Is Cat Williams a football fan? It doesn't matter. He's from Cincinnati. Okay. All right. That's what we doing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got chili. We on, got yes, on spaghetti. spaghetti. On spaghetti. You know what it is. Pittsburgh's got Permani Brothers. Permani Brothers. French yeah. fries on a corned beef sandwich. sandwich. Yeah. yeah. All right. What else we got? Fuck off. All right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>